Uh, bada bing, bada bam. Welcome to this week's Bacon a Mystery, Bacon a Murder episode. Except it's not going to be a mystery month. I was thinking for the month of February because it's the month of love. It's the month of Valentine's Day. We don't do a thriller. I was thinking of doing a thriller where it's like a husband kills a wife, wife kills a husband, something like that. But this one is kind of a thriller. The husband does kill the wife, but it gets really crazy. We are talking about the K-drama, Marry My Husband. This has probably been one of the most requested busted bams like i think i've gotten dms on instagram like multiple ones where it's like hey have you talked about marry my husband why aren't you talking about marry my husband have you at least seen it because it's all over tiktok so if you guys don't know marry my husband is a k drama that was adapted from a webtoon it's so good i'm three episodes in it's so good so this is gonna be part one but i'm gonna have a monday bacon a mystery episode for you every single monday this entire month that's gonna be four of them and we're gonna finish the whole series together so let's get into part one. I'm just going to drop you into the center it's of it. It's not even finished yet, right? No, right no. As so right, it's ongoing. It's ongoing. They're it, filming right now. It, <laughs> anyway, it all starts with Chi Won, but I'm going to call her Gia, okay? Now, Gia is sitting on the edge of her hospital bed. She's looking out this tiny, tiny window. The window's open and she can feel the nice little breeze. She's in her patient gown. She's got a beanie on and she's got these big old spectacles she's got the world's biggest eyeglasses on i don't know if her prescription is that bad they take up her whole face how old is gia you know they say that she's like 38 but she looks like 23 yeah so (laughs) i mean the actress is beautiful so the windows open there's a nice breeze coming in. It's cherry blossom season. So all the trees have this like beautiful pink and white flower petals that are just falling around and flying about. And it's beautiful. But it's also really depressing because Gia is going to die. She has been diagnosed with terminal cancer and it's not looking good. The doctors have given her six to 12 months to live. And this is probably the last time that she's going to see cherry blossom trees. So she's sitting there, sadly, looking out the window when a flower petal starts drifting in through the window and Gia is about to reach out and grab it with her open palm when a girl in a tight pencil skirt and red stiletto heels walks up and slams the window shut. Obviously, she's wearing a top as well, but she's dressed like a sexy secretary. She leans down, grabs Gia's tiny, frail little face in her hands. Cold wind isn't good for you. (sighs) My Gia, you're still so pretty. I'm not going to forgive you if you leave me. So don't forget that you have me. You have to live a very long life with me. Got it? Thanks, Stacey. Uh, I I got unlucky in my marriage, but at least I have you. Stacey sighs and pulls up a chair. Why would you say that? Michael's a great husband. Yeah, well, he's cheating on me. What? Yeah, he texted me, I love you and I miss you. And then he deleted it right away. And I'm sure it was sent by mistake. Don't get so sensitive. Stacy's phone buzzes and she glances at it. Do you want me to talk to him for you? Forget it. I, I don't even need him. I just need you. I only need you too, Gia. Let's only think good thoughts, okay, my other half? The nurse walks into the room. Miss Kang, Gia Kang, it's time to go to the transfusion room. Gia instinctively reaches for Stacy's hand and she clearly looks terrified defeated and stacy's trying her best to reassure her best friend her other half they've been friends since childhood okay they've been with each other through thick and thin everything stacy's like this time the medicine is not gonna hurt at all you're gonna get better once it's done this is gonna be the last round of chemo okay just don't give up and you just see tears pooling in Stacy's eyes and she's trying to smile and stay strong for Gia and she gives her hand a squeeze and watches her walk off with the nurse. Gia gets hooked up to a machine and the chemotherapy starts and she's obviously feeling very sensitive about her life. She doesn't know if this is going to work. She might die like right now. She might die sometime soon and she's just reflecting on her life. Side note, I will say the opening episode was just so dark. Like, if you have anyone in your family that's sick, this is probably not a good show. Anyway, side note, she's super young, and she's laying there with all of these things hooked up to her body, and she's asking herself, I don't even remember the last time I was happy. So why do I miss it so much? I was given 6 to 12 months. They said that would be a miracle, but it feels pointless. 
And as Gia is about to drift off into sleep, her eyes start shutting ever so slightly, and she has a flashback to the biggest days of her life. Not the best, but like the most important days of her life, which is her wedding day. It looks like it's in some sort of reception hall. I mean, it's not grand, but it's intimate, it's pretty. And I will say Gia's <laughs> choice of wedding dress is kind of out of place. It looks like the type of wedding dress that you would see in the 1950s. Not just in the modesty aspect, but just the design. It's got like this V-neck collar with poofy sleeves. She's wearing short gloves. It's just a little odd. But Gia looks happy. She's throwing the bouquet and her best friend Stacy is there catching it. And her new husband Michael is putting his arm around her. You look so beautiful today. They hug and everybody starts cheering and this middle-aged woman in a traditional Korean hanbok comes up to Gia and we can assume that this is Michael's mom because that's what they usually wear and she's all like rubbing the back of her hand on Gia's cheek. You look absolutely beautiful, Gia. I picked the perfect dress for you. She very obviously glances at the empty chairs on the bright side. So whoever Gia's parents are, they're not here at her wedding and Michael's mom wants Gia to remember that. That's okay. You're part of our family now. You're my daughter, you poor thing. It's not your fault that you didn't receive proper household discipline, but it's okay. As your mother now, I can teach you. Is that a threat? What's going on? Yeah, it's a threat. So her idea of household discipline is sitting Gia down at the dinner table, slamming her hand on the table. Our Michael is the third generation of only sons in our family. Three generations of sons. How dare you sever that? Michael is a loser, by the way. <laughs> so. Wait, wait, wait. What, what is she yelling about? She's saying, you need to give me a son. You need to give me a kid. How dare you sever it? We have three generations of sons. You're not even going to give me a kid? Oh, is it, oh, Gia's deciding not to have a, a or child? Or she can't conceive? We don't oh, know. Oh. I think uh, Michael can't conceive. Oh. And Gia's not even fighting back. She looks defeated. She's got both of her hands in her lap like she's being told off by a teacher. And she's staring at her hands. And she just says... I'm sorry. Michael walks out of the room into the dining room in his little PJs. He's on his phone. And you would think that he would stand up for his wife against his mom. Nope. He just plops down next to his mommy and continues scrolling on his phone while his mom is going in on Gia. I took in a worthless girl like you. Why can't you have kids? Do you even know how to do anything right? The mother-in-law gets up to slap Gia and finally Michael steps in, grabs his mom's arm, but he's not even being like, mom, what's wrong with you? He's being like, mom, just put up with her. She's just, you know how she is. Dude, (laughs) is this not triggering? This is so triggering. This is so, they end up tossing over the coffee cup and it just spills over onto Gia's lap, the hot coffee. But even then she can't scream or say anything. She's kind of like this little mouse that's scared of everyone and everything. Michael rules the house, even though it seems like he's an absolute freaking idiot. So the next flashback Gia has is of Michael proudly sitting there on his mom's dining table, showing her his laptop. And Gia for the first time is angry. What? You quit your job? Yeah, I'm gonna go into stocks. You remember Rogentel? Look, take a look for yourself. A few more trades and it's gonna change our lives. But I can't trade if I need to go to work. So I'm not gonna go to work. You get it? Michael, we have monthly loan payments, bills. We should have discussed this together. Yeah. Are you f***ing around with me right now? Why do I have to discuss anything with you? Huh? He runs over to the couch, plops down and throws his head onto his mummy's lap. And he goes, oh, ma, do you think I'll do well? You think I'll hit it big in the stock world? And his mom is just in the back like, of course, my son can do anything. Do you think there's actual human like this? Yeah. Yeah. I think I've met at least like three Korean boys like this. I can say that I'm Korean, okay? And I only know four. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, okay? Now it's up to Gia to hold down all the expenses and the bills. And she's working overtime at work. So she works at a company called UNK and she's on the marketing team. She's getting yelled at by her boss nonstop. His name is Manager Kim. He's balding. He's weird. Do you have f***ing issues at home? Does that matter? Does the world revolve around you? Everybody in this workplace has issues at home. (sighs) Ah. This is why married married women shouldn't work. (laughs) Bringing your issues to the workplace. What are you doing? Are they just trauma dumping? Yeah, I think they really are. Because like I'm sitting there like pulling out my hair and I've like, I've never really experienced this. (laughs) So I don't know why I'm so traumatized. (laughs) And he throws her proposal on the ground. So sorry. 
She drops to her knees and starts picking up the papers, but blood starts gushing out of her nose and nothing is going right anywhere. Gia is overworked, overstressed. Nobody's helping her. She has no financial, emotional, mental support, nothing. Even when she gets home to her unemployed husband. So in Korea, a lot of the apartments, they don't use key fobs. They don't use keys. They use keypads. So you lift it up and you put in the passcode and then you put it down and then you can get in. The lock is broken. So it's just unlocked all day. Oh, shit. So the kitchen is a mess. There's a plastic water bottle filled with cigarette butts. I mean, Michael is just smoking in the house. There's cup ramen containers just thrown around. The place is disgusting. I feel like if I even just swiped a single finger on any random surface in any given area of this home, it would be sticky. And Michael is just sitting on the couch playing video games. You said you'd fix the lock today, Michael. Are you calling me fucking lazy? Working overtime every day doesn't mean you're good at your job. You're so busy running around because you're so bad at your job. So know your place. There's this annoying beeping sound coming from the other room. Why didn't you just empty the washing machine? I put it in for the clothes and now I have to, when you hear it, you can just throw it into the dryer. Michael throws his controller onto the coffee table, breaking a glass cup. Yeah, I've been working all day. I just sat down. <sighs> And he storms off into his room and slams the door shut. And Gia starts feeling this pain in her stomach, and it's really painful. The doctor tells her, it's stage four gastric cancer. It's not looking good. Gia goes home to tell her husband and her mother-in-law what happened at the doctor's office, and the mother-in-law starts crying. You poor thing. She's staring at her son. My poor son, why did you have to marry her of all people? This is why you have to pick people carefully. Michael's sitting there, arms crossed, pouting, basically. This is a shitty luck. Mom, if Gia has cancer, who's going to make my meals? You stupid, stupid, naive boy. Don't even worry about that. Technology is advanced these days. People need to work to overcome illness. They need to have some purpose fueling their lives. She turns to Gia. Isn't that right, Gia? And don't think about telling your company. Work until you can. Don't think about acting all emotional just because you're sick. I'm sick this, I'm sick that. I don't want to hear it. So they're just like pure evil, not even like a single percent of niceness. Like he acts like a child. He's pure evil, but as an adult, he acts like a child. So there will be times where he shows like egg yo. But I don't know what that means. That would just piss me off even more. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. Egg yo to the wife or to the mom? To whoever he needs something from. Uh, yeah. I think that he used to show Egyo to the wife, but not anymore because he feels like he's abused her enough that she's not going to leave. So Michael's like, can't they just cut it out, mommy? Literally. Okay. And the nightmare mother-in-law is like, it'll be fine. We have technology. Cancer is no big deal nowadays. Gio wakes up from her nightmare, but it's not a nightmare because it's literally her life. And she's in the hospital bed, finished with this round of chemo. And she starts slowly making her way to the room with an IV in her. And one of the older nurses is like, Psst, Gia, don't worry about your husband's affair. You're better off without him, you know? When you get older, husbands, they just slow you down. Don't worry about bad things. Your body's still not doing well. Besides, you have other people in your life. Like the, the, the pretty girl, the best friend. She's so sweet, pleasant. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, she's really nice. Um, She was like my everything. Yeah, she's a good worker too. She's a manager at UNK. It's the company that I worked for before. To be honest, I felt like I was always lacking a lot of things, but Stacy was the only one that stayed by my side, even during all of that. I mean, she always has been and she always will. But we see driving out of the hospital in a red Mini Cooper convertible is Stacy. And tell me why, if my bestie is dying, I'm not gonna be driving top down, putting my hand out to feel the air. I don't know. I'm just saying that's just the vibe. She's enjoying her day a little too much. And then she parks at an apartment building, takes lipstick out of her pink Chanel bag, applies it, steps out in her red stilettos, undoes her hair, walks into an apartment, honey! And she throws herself onto a man and they start making out and ripping each other's clothes off. And that man is Michael! Can I just tell you during this scene, I felt uncontrollable rage against you. (laughs) <laughs> like, you have never I'm not sick you have never once cheated but I'm like I'm just f-ing mad at you today <laughs> like <laughs> yeah you never know right what but my question is yeah why is the best friend going for the loser husband um she has this thing where she's obsessed with anything her best friend has she's in like constant competition with her best friend if if Michael was not her best friend's boyfriend she, I don't think she'd care 
But the main character th- doesn't know. Gia doesn't know. I think she kind of understood, but she accepted it as her best friend's fault. She always felt like her best friend was too good to be her friend. She's got really low self esteem. Yeah, wow. girlie's going through it. Now she's making out with Gia's husband, Michael. Gia's lost in thought, talking to the nurse about how great her best friend is. When a man in a suit comes to walk to her in the hallway, Miss Kang, Gia, we've been trying to contact your medical guardian. He needs to settle your medical bills if you want to continue treatment. Please settle the bills by the end of the day, or we will have to discharge you. I'm very sorry. Yes.、Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Gia goes back to her room. She's calling up her husband. He's not picking up. She's shaking and she's pissed. She's texting him angrily. You quit your job after we got married, so I would support us. At least pay the medical bills. Answer the freaking phone. He won't answer, so she has to go home to figure out how to pay the bills or figure out where the money went. So she slowly walks out of the hospital. The cherry blossoms are falling; they're like raining down cherry blossom petals. She can barely take steps without her whole body looking like she's about to faint. Okay, but it's beautiful outside. She gets into the first taxi she sees, and the driver stares at her in the rearview mirror. It's a middle-aged man with a cute rural accent, like a Pusan accent. My goodness, you look really sick. But you're gonna get better soon. Spring's coming. I'm not gonna get better. I'm dying. Stop it! You can't say things like that. You know you can't think like that. The doctors told me it's true. Besides, nothing good's gonna come out of living anyway. Now, why would you say that? What? My dad passed away early. I don't have siblings. I barely have a husband. I mean. <laughs> I, honestly, it would be better if I didn't have a husband. Then I wouldn't have any debt, and then I'd be able to pay my hospital bills. Gia is laying her heart out to this man, this Ajashi. Her life is hard, but the taxi driver is both hands on the wheel, just smiling. You need to follow your path until the very end to know for sure. And then he swerves onto a side road. I mean, this man is absolutely unhinged. Gia is holding onto her seatbelt. Like, excuse me, this isn't the way. I'll take you down a different path. Just trust me; it'll be good. He takes her down this one-lane stone tunnel that she's never seen before. And suddenly, when they get out, there's even more cherry blossom trees. It's beautiful. I mean, it's pouring, raining cherry blossoms, trees. And he's like, "See, we're here. I told you, the path you know is not the only one. There are other paths." So deep. Gia tries to pay the driver her last ten dollars, and she gets out. The driver rolls down the window. Excuse me, ma'am. This is my last day as a taxi driver. Here, take it. Think of it as an allowance from your dad. You'll gain energy in no time. You'll be running around making big money, and you'll meet someone who would die for you, and you'll have a good life. No, <laughs>、um, it's okay, sir. You don't have to do any of that. All the cherry blossoms start rustling and they start raining down on her. The driver is smiling, still holding out the ten dollars. Come on now, take it. You're hurting an Ajashi's arm. Gia hesitates, then reaches her arm in through the door and grabs the ten dollars. She bows, and the taxi driver rolls up his window and drives off just like that. And now Gia is stumbling up the stairs into her unit. She has to take breaks between the steps because she's weak and out of breath, and she just stumbles halfway up. She finally makes it to her unit, lifts up the keypad. The lock is still fucking broken. It's unlocked, so she just opens the door, and walks in. And in front of her are a pair of red stilettos. What the、ah. fork? She walks past them and starts walking towards the bedroom. And she hears a woman's voice. It's a very—we know this woman's voice. You're really smart, babe. How did you think of the cancer insurance? Her dad died of cancer. She kept getting thinner. I thought it was time, so I took out a policy. Insane! You did such a good job. Was it like a million dollars? Gia walks closer and closer to the bedroom. The door is open, and we both know who's in the bed right now. Stacy and Michael, after a bedonk bedonk session, are in bed cuddling. And Michael's like, "Yeah, if she dies, I already got the diagnostic insurance and bought you that Chanel bag. I put the rest in stocks to buy you an even better bag." You're so sweet. Let's buy a house when Gia dies. That sounds incredible, honestly. But this. She's hanging on longer than I thought. She's persistent. I even told her not to go to the doctor after she first started getting sick, but she ended up going. Stacy is staring at Michael and eating candy. She is persistent. Maybe I'll take her out for some fresh air and push her off the roof. No, don't do that. What if you also get hurt? I mean, I can push her gently. No one would know. <sighs> What the hell has she even been eating? Why is she still holding on? Right? We should eat whatever she's eating. Gia is not even crying at this point. She knew her husband was cheating on her, but 
Not with her best friend, her childhood best friend. The only person that she's ever known and trusted in her life like that. Her other half. Her other half. The only reason she wanted to keep living was for her best friend. Gia's backing up in shock and she sees on the kitchen table a picture of her dad with her when she was young, when he was still alive. And there's food stains all over it. It looks like they used it as a fucking coaster. Oh, Oh, this show is crazy. So Gia burst in through the bedroom door and the two are making out again and Gia's screaming, you crazy bastards! Gia! Michael's so shocked he starts choking on a candy (coughs) and Stacy immediately goes over to pat his back. Babe, babe, are you all right? The two of them are huddled together in the corner of the room and Gia's screaming, throwing pillows and small little trinkets at them. And Gia's like, this is insurance fraud. I'm going to report you. Hey, what the hell? He turns to Stacy. Are you okay? You're not hurt, right? Stacy looks like a little wounded animal. Like she's so stressed out and hurt by Gia throwing a pillow at her because she's such a dainty little princess. I'm going to fucking kill her. I'm going to kill her. And Gia's like, Stacy, I... She throws her picture frame with her and Michael at their wedding, throws it at them, and Michael covers Stacy, protecting her. I'm going to kill both of you! (sighs) That's enough. Michael's like, hey, that's enough. He starts walking with his arm around Stacy, and she's looking all traumatized and like, save me, protect me. And then he's walking with her, and they get close. They're trying to walk past the door, past Gia. Aren't you tired of this, Gia? He throws his hand up like he's about to smack her, but he stops. He just places his hand aggressively on her head. What could you even do right now in your state? Gia is shaking in fear and disgust, but she's also really hurt. Michael grabs her shoulder and then just pushes her onto the ground. So she falls and he says, Pika, like move out the way. And he walks out with Stacy. This is out of this world. Gia like- crawls out, grabs a tin of candies, the ones that they were eating, like a plastic jar of candies, throws it at Michael's back and the candies all fall out. And Gia's still on the ground. Michael looks like he's about to beat his dying wife up. Like, honestly... I was getting angry, okay? He looks like he's not afraid to kill her. But Stacy stops him. Wait! She walks up to Gia, crouches down on the floor, gets on her knees. Gia, I'm really sorry. You're sorry? I'm sorry, but there's nothing we can do about it now. She looks up at Gia, and Stacy's crying. She's crying. But the living should go on living. You were going to die anyway. Why do you only ever think about yourself? (laughs) Gia is shaking. She's heartbroken. What kind of person says that? Especially your best friend. Stacy gets up, or at least she tries to, because Gia grabs her Chanel bag, pulls her back down onto the ground. She tries to get up again, and she does it again, until finally Gia uses all of her strength to get up, and now Stacy's on the ground, and Gia just starts grabbing her hair, pulling at it. You don't think you'll die? You don't think so? It's going to happen to you, too. Stacy screaming, babe, help me! Girl, if you don't, okay, like, please, it's not that serious. Gia is very weak. Maybe at most you lose a few strands of hair. I really don't like her. The actress is so good. Yeah, she's so good. Michael grabs Gia by the wrist and starts dragging her off of Stacy, and he gets up in Gia's face. If you're gonna die, just die already and f- off and he pushes her back like both her shoulders she falls so hard through the glass coffee table and you're like this is the k-drama moment she is now there's a pool of red blood behind her it looks like fruit punch it's very bright red gia is holding on to her very last breath and she's wondering to herself i longed for the happiness i never had yet here i am with my good old friend unhappiness and she sees Michael and Stacy, and they're walking slowly closer to Gia. Stacy's like, babe, I think she's dead. Well, no, shit, Sherlock. Michael's like, she was going to die anyway. Does it matter how she died? I <sighs> think so. <laughs> yeah. I think it does. I think the, I think the cops would think so, yeah. No. Stacy's like, what's going to happen to us? Stop. Just stop, okay? People with cancer faint all the time. She tripped and she fell, and we found her like this. That's it. What do we do? What if we don't get paid? April 12th, 2023, Gia was found dead. But suddenly Gia isn't dead. She's standing in the office break room and we have no idea if that was all a hallucination or what. We have no clue what's going on, but she's very much alive again. And Michael is coming up to her. Michael's like, babe, what are you doing? Why are you spacing out? Why aren't you wearing your glasses? 
Gia's like, oh my gosh, what is, what is going on? She puts on her glasses and she sees very clearly now standing in front of her is her killer, Michael. And she starts crying. Michael's like, did you go to the hospital? What do they say? He gets closer and puts his hands up around her waist and Gia loses her sh- I mean, completely. She starts screaming, attacking Michael, throwing food from the break room at him. He's running out of the break room, terrified. She's running out after him, grabbing him by the back of his head, like just grabbing a fistful of hair, dragging him down onto the ground. He's screaming, babe, what's wrong? Please, ow, 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 it hurts. What's wrong with you? Let go, let go of me, God damn it. And his fist clenches. He's about to punch her. But the boss, the hot boss, <laughs> Richard, in a full suit, steps in and breaks them apart by basically chucking Michael onto the ground and holding Gia's wrist. Miss Kang, Gia Kang, snap out of it. We're at work. What are you doing? We're at work? She starts looking around and everybody's staring at her and she's confused. Like, how did she even get here? Last she remembered her husband and best friend were having an affair and she was pushed onto the coffee table. What do you mean we're at work? She doesn't even know, okay? She's starting to freak out. Are you okay? What's going on? Are you, are you hurt? Gia looks down at her arm and hand. She used to have these scars there. Some of them were from the cancer treatment. Another one was from an incident that she had, but now they're gone. She lets go of Richard's arm and starts stumbling through the office. She looks in the mirror. She doesn't have cancer. This is what she looked like before she had cancer. She's alive. I mean, none of this is making any sense. She stumbles back from the mirror and she trips, knocking down a hot boiling water kettle that's about to fall on her face. But Richard stops it with his arm, chucks it away, grabs her by the shoulders and gently pulls her up. Stacy pushes through the crowd. Yeah, they all work together. Oh yeah, yeah. (laughs) Gia, are you okay? But all Gia can hear is Stacy saying, the living should go on living. You were gonna die anyway. Stacy and Michael are now standing next to each other, staring at her like something's wrong with her. So Gia gets up, runs out of the building. What the fork is going on? She tries the elevator. It's taking too long. She runs down the stairs to leave. She's doing a lot. And for some reason, she's adamant on going down into the subway station. But she's running so fast that her shoe slips off. She's about to trip and fall down the entire flight of stairs and probably die again. But Richard catches her in his arms. Enough. She nods. And he sits her down on the ledge. Do you think that you can handle it? Get it together? She nods again and he goes to grab her shoes. But she gets up and she starts staring at the busy street, the billboards, the signs. And she starts having a fucking panic attack because it is now 2013, not 2023. 10 years ago? Yes. She's somehow alive again and back 10 years into the past before she married Michael, before she got cancer, before any of this happened. Bro. Richard walks over with her shoes and saves Gia from falling for the 49th time in this one single scene. What happened? Where are we? About 200 yards from the company building, you are sprinting out of there. As for what happened, I should ask you the same. What's going on? Gia just shakes her head no, and Richard gets Gia a taxi back home and escorts her back. They're standing on the side street in front of her apartment, and he drapes his blazer around her. Do you have something warm at home to eat? Uh, uh, do you have cash? He takes out a stack of cash, probably like $500. Oh, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm fine. You have no phone or wallet. Gia's hesitating because, yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't have a phone or wallet. It's freaking 2013. Richard shoves the wad of cash into into a suit jacket pocket that she's wearing. Take it. There are times that you need someone else's help. Thank you. She walks off and into her apartment. And it's not the same apartment that she shared with Michael and his mom, obviously, since they're not married yet. But she lives alone in a studio apartment. And the place is kind of messy. Gia stands there for a second before she has a bright idea, runs to the fridge, slams it open. There's eggs, there's milk. And all the expiration dates are in 2013. It's 2013. Wait, so she's not dating Michael yet? She is, but they're just boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh. They just started dating, really. Oh. Yeah. She slams the fridge door shut and the bell rings. She goes to the intercom and she can see Richard, the boss. He's outside holding a black plastic bag. She unlocks the door, goes to the gate, but now he's gone. The bag is just left on the gate. Fresh fruit, vegetables, coffee, warm coffee, a cup ramen. And she goes to town on that cup ramen and she starts talking to herself because at this point, I mean, listen, she could do anything. Like if she's going 10 years back, I give her a mental health pass. She could be talking to the people in the walls and I would indulge her. 
okay, let's sort this out. Is this a dream? And if it is a dream, which one is the dream? Am I dreaming right now or am I dreaming my death in 2023? No, 2023 wasn't a dream. I couldn't have dreamt it because I remember General Manager Richard. He's the general manager now, but in 2021, he was promoted to be the CEO of the entire company. No one knows it yet in the office, but he's secretly the company founder's grandson. His succession process is going to begin in a few years. The fact that I know that, does that mean I traveled back in time? Gia is so confused. But the Richard, Richard seems like he's interested in her too. Yeah. Gia is so confused. She goes back into the suit jacket pocket and grabs the wad of $50 bills because that's the highest bill. They don't have a $100 bill in Korea. Uh, $50 bills that Richard gave her and pulls them out. And also the $10 bill that the taxi driver gave back to her is there. But that was in 2023 when she died. What? She flattens out the $10 bill. And she remembers the taxi driver saying, think of it as an allowance from your father. She opens up the $10 bill and there's a tiny heart drawn in the corner. And she has a quick memory. Her dad was drawing a heart on a $10 bill and she used to scold him. Dad, you can't draw on money like that. This is not a drawing, Gia. It's love. For us, it's love. For the government, I think it's illegal. (laughs) Fine. Don't worry, Gia. I'm going to listen to you. I always do everything you want. I'm your dad. And in that moment, Gia realizes that the taxi driver in 2023 was her dead dad who sent her back in time to have a second chance so she wouldn't be miserable. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> the dad came back alive? No, it's like, um, it's, it's a, a sign? it's a webtoon. Oh, okay, it was okay. magic. Oh, it was magic. Got it. it was magic. She remembers her dad telling her, I would do everything for you, Gia. I'd do it all. And she starts sobbing, just full on breaking down. And she's crying. Dad, you should have told me. You should have told me it was you. But right when she's breaking down, realizing what happened, she hears someone entering in the passcode to her apartment. The door unlocks. She runs to the door. And in front of her face standing there is her killer, Michael. Why is your face so bloated? Come on, let's go get dinner. Gia goes out to eat with Michael. They're sitting at one of those street food stalls and Gia's phone is just blowing up. Stacy is texting her nonstop. Gia, what's going on? I've been calling you all day and you've been ignoring my calls. I'm getting worried about you. I'm coming over right now. Gia bites her lip and starts texting back. No, don't come. I just wasn't feeling well and I'm with Michael right now. Michael comes back from the restroom and sits down on the plastic stool and he starts pouring himself a shot of soju. And Gia's thinking, you need soju? I need soju. She grabs the soju bottle and Michael stops her. Hey, hey, don't be like that. I know you have a lot on your mind, okay? And I personally don't get it, but a lot of women say it happens, so fine. I guess I get it. But you're making it too obvious at work. You're making me look really bad. Speak so I can understand, dude. I don't know what you're saying. Michael takes a shot of soju. When did it happen? We haven't done it in a while. Why? Are you pregnant? Are you sure it's mine? What? You told me you thought you were pregnant. And Gia's like, oh, shit. I remember I couldn't stomach anything so I thought I was pregnant it was gastritis from stress was that the start of the gastric cancer it wasn't enough that he stressed me out until I died he also had an affair with my friend this little head and Michael's like hey 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 Gia I'm kidding I know you would never do that with another man listen don't take this the wrong way but you're not young anymore if you take a step back from work now It's going to be a huge blow to your career. And I know you love work. You don't want to become some old stay-at-home lady. Having a baby now is like clipping the wings off of a free bird. So he's been a red flag since like the day he was born. And Gia's thinking in her head, if I didn't know you only wanted me to keep my job so that you can quit yours and leech off of me, I might believe you. Michael's like, so termination. And as for the termination fee, fine, I'll pay half. Half? You'll pay half? If you're going to do it anyway, do it quickly for your body. Also, I don't think I'm ready for kids. Nothing good can come from it. Gia smirks and takes a shot of soju. I'm not pregnant. It's gastritis. (gasps) You're not pregnant? It's gastritis? Then why are you being so sensitive? (sighs) Let's break up. What? Are you done talking? She slams a $50 bill down on the table, the one that Richard gave her, and walks out. And Michael is speechless. He storms up behind her. How dare she break up with him? He grabs her arm and is screaming in the alleyway. Are you done talking? Seriously? I tried to be fucking understanding when you're acting crazy today and you want to break up with me? 
She's like, let go of me. He slams her up against the building. Her glasses fall off and he's holding her shoulders down. Did I say something wrong? Why are you being so hysterical? Are you crazy? Gia's thinking to herself, I forgot that Michael doesn't care if I die, but he cannot stand the idea of breaking up. What do you think? Who do you think you are breaking up with me? I'm going to fucking kill you. He lets go of one of her shoulders and he's about to start smacking her, and, but he doesn't. He's just like, how dare you break up with me? Huh? Tell me, tell me. Do you think that you could break up with me? Who do you think you are? Gia just starts screaming, someone help me, help! Oh. Yeah, a group of young girls walk by and I guess they help because now they're both sitting in a police station and the police officer is looking at both of them. And he turns to Gia. Miss, you can't come to the police station over a lover's quarrel. It's not like that. He almost, I know, I get it. But eight out of 10 times, women ask us to press charges. And then once we do, they get mad at us. I mean, how ridiculous is that for us? Michael smiles and leans closer to the police officer, man to man. You know how it is, sir. There are days that women are um, sensitive for no reason. I apologize on her behalf. Oh, the officer smiles at Michael and then turns to Gia. You weren't hit and nothing's broken. I see your boyfriend works for a big company. Bro, they work for the same company. But you can't just come to the police just because you got angry and sensitive. Excuse me, am I supposed to wait to come here until something is broken? You know what? Forget it. Forget it. Can someone just take me home? Gia gets driven back in the car and she's thinking, this is not working. She goes home to look at all of her things, her financials. She has $500 in the bank, which yeah, $500 is a lot of money, but also she earns a lot more and she's like in her thirties and Michael has been borrowing and leeching off of her. So it's like, she should have more than $500 saved. She's a single woman with no kids with a good paying job, but he's been draining her of all of her money. And she's thinking, I used to be so scared of him breaking up with me that I would let him do whatever he wanted. He already has a lot of my money. He's used my card. He's cashed loans out in my name. What do I do? I can't run away with $500. I'm not going to last a month. She's stressed. She grabs her phone and there's a text message from Michael. I'm sorry I got mad and I yelled. I'll admit it. But you're at fault too, you know. I meant what I said earlier. I'm going to buy you a bag once the stocks do well. I got inside information on Rajantal. When this blows up, let's get married. Crazy fucking bastard. Wait, Rajantal? Why does that sound so familiar? Oh my God. It was Michael's only success in life. That one time. There's a way out. I'm going to use this to get through it. I don't remember everything that happened since 2013, but I do know a few stocks that I can invest in. The ones that did really, really well. Rajiental, Apple, some of those. I can do this. I'm going to live a proper life this time. For real, for real. Like she really does not want to waste her second chance. She's going to insider trade and get a full body MRI and make sure that she's healthy. That's her game plan. <laughs> so, Bro, like, if, yeah. come on, that, come on. Yeah. <laughs> like at that point, yeah. come on, come on. Come if on. you're not the next Bill Gates, I don't yeah. know, man. Like you're doing something wrong. If you go back in time and you're not Bill Gates, yeah. come on. Yeah. The doctor comes in with the results. Can you imagine like if yeah. you go back in time 20 oh. years, you'd be like, everyone listen to me. Apple, iPhone. They'd be like, no, Blackberry. We really like using our thumbs. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's not going to work, huh? <laughs> it's not going to work. No one's going to listen to you. <laughs> no one's going to listen to you. Managing your finances is a headache, especially when there seems to be endless expenses. I don't know what it is about 2024, but ever since New Year's, we've had so many things breaking in this house. Our dishwasher started leaking. Our sink started leaking. A few of my family members started complaining about their cars that were breaking down and appliances. And that's just like the first month of 2024. And it feels so overwhelming to try and stay on top of all your finances and build your credit at the same time, which is why I recommend using Chime. There is no better day to start building your credit than today. With Chime, online checking account, you can get a fee-free overdraft of up to $200, plus get paid up to two days early with direct deposit. Chime takes the stress away from unexpected or urgent expenses, all while helping to build your credit score. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for SpotMe, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a debit card purchase or a cash withdrawal that exceeds your balance. You can also wire money to your friends through Chime, even if your friends are not Chime members. The best part is there are no monthly, minimum balance, or overdraft fees. Sign up for Chime today. Joining takes just minutes get started at chime.com slash baking that's chime.com slash baking banking services and debit card provided by the bank court bank na or stride bank na members fdic spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer out of network atm withdrawal fees may apply
So she gets this little brain scan or an MRI, not a brain scan. And her doctor's like, I told you, you didn't have to do this scan. It's just gastritis. It can get serious. So make sure to take your meds and stop stressing out so much. But otherwise, you're going to be fine. So afterwards, Gia goes to the bookstore to pick out some books on investing, you know? Books like, read this if you want to quit your job, which is awkward because her boss, Richard, bumps into her at the bookstore. Ah, Mr. Richard. Okay, retiring with stocks isn't a crime. Will you die as a salary man? Read this if you want to quit your job. Do you plan on quitting your job, Miss Kang? Uh, no, no. G is trying to come up with a good response, but she looks at his crossed arms and there is this scar on his wrist, Richard's wrist, from when he knocked away that pot of boiling water to protect her. Wait, did you get hurt yesterday? I'm so sorry. I was so out of it. I didn't even notice. Buy me a meal if you're sorry. I like kukbap. So kukbap is like rice submerged in soup, if I'm not mistaken. It's supposed to be very, very good, very, very cheap, really homey food. But he takes her to like a Michelin star restaurant where they have warm hand towels in the beginning before they serve you kukbap. Wait, is he hitting on her? I don't know. You tell me. You think he's flirting or not? Is the vibe like, but she's dating someone. Yeah. In the office. Mm -hmm. And Uh the boss is like, I like what I like. He said, I like what I like. You want to date an intern or you want to date the big boss, the big daddy. (laughs) So Gia looks panicked at the restaurant. I mean, she cannot afford this. She has not completed her insider training yet. And he's like, what's wrong? When you said cookbook restaurant, I thought it, I didn't think it looked like this. What else did it look like? Oh, um, I, I guess nothing. So Gia starts thinking to herself, I mean, I never spoke with this guy before, so I didn't know, but he's got like this little master of the house vibe. Like you can tell that he's very classy, like little master of the house. I don't know if that's the good translation. So in Korean, we call him like, uh, I forget, but it's like, it's like when kids act like a little, like, Mm -hmm. you know, like little master of the house. Yeah, yeah. He's got that vibe. Not like master of the (sighs) house. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, China has... Yes, like, yes, yes. Like a little prince. Yes, like little prince of the house vibes. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay, now the first round of food comes out and Richard ushers for her to like, eat, eat. He grabs a spoonful of soup and he starts blowing on it because it's hot, but it steams up his eyeglasses. So what does he do? He whips them off. And Gia is staring at him, entranced because he is so hot. And he looks <laughs> up at her and he goes, how is it? A lot better than I thought. And Richard looks down at her untouched food. You haven't even tried it yet. What are you referring to? (laughs) Oh, I meant the food. And she rushes to shove a spoonful of soup in her mouth, but it burns her tongue. And Richard pours her a glass of water and quickly hands her a napkin. And she's thinking, what the fork is going on? Has he always been like this? He's more handsome and considerate than I ever remembered. Thank you for yesterday, for taking me home and buying me the cup ramen and the tea. You're different today. Oh, I am? Are you really going to quit? To be honest, I was considering it. Uh, I just felt like I can't keep going like this. I figured it was kind of time for a change. Change as in marriage? What? You bought a book about interior design, so I just assumed. Ah, no, 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 this. And Gia's thinking, oh, it makes sense because in 2013, she was preparing to marry Michael this year. I'd rather die than get married is what she's thinking, but she doesn't say that, okay? Instead, her phone is blowing up and they're both staring at it because Stacy is texting her nonstop. She's leaving messages like, Gia, my Gia, my other half, call me back right now. You're my only friend, Gia. Why aren't you answering me? Where are you, Gia? Gia tries to ignore her phone, but she sees Richard's scar from the boiling water. She leans over the table, grabs his arm. Her eyes are wide. It is just like the scar that she had in 2023 on her arm. The same shape. It's like a crescent moon burn shape. What does that mean? Exactly. And she looks up and Richard is staring at her. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Uh, The scar just looked very painful. Oh, um, no, it's fine. But if you're done, we should head out. When they get outside, Richard starts talking. Thank you for the meal, Gia. This makes us even, I would say. Also, I would like to say that you are a very talented person. Getting married and starting a family is nice. Would Gia pay the meal? Yeah, but I think it would be a shame if you quit. And I'm saying that as your boss. Gia smiles and thanks him. And both of them start walking off in separate directions. And Gia's thinking, I used to be scared of that guy because he was always frowning. But he's a pretty decent person, you know? How did he know that I was talented? I feel like I forgot that I had some talent. I forgot that I was good at my job. 
I wanted to do a lot of things at work, things I had to give up because getting married and because I didn't want to outshine Michael. But now I remember. So she's inspired. She's ready to get to f***ing work for Daddy Richard, but also insider trading. So she shows up at work the next day. Michael is standing there angrily looking at his unanswered text messages to Gia. Damn it, she's really starting to piss me off. Gia takes the stairs instead to avoid him. And when she gets to them, they're all sitting in the same cubicles. Okay, so Michael is like diagonal from her to the left. And then diagonal from her to the right is f***ing Stacy. <laughs> Yeah, wow. Now, Michael and Stacy are both trying to talk to Gia because she's been ignoring the fork out of both of them. But manager Kim, their direct manager, storms in. Get to work, chop, chop, everybody. It's been 10 minutes since start time. What the fuck are you guys doing just sitting there? So Stacy sneaks up under Gia's desk and she's swatting, squatting next to Gia. Gia, you never called me last night. What were you doing? Last night? Oh, I was just watching TV. I lost track of time. I got caught up in this show. It was about this woman who had late stage cancer and she caught her husband and her best friend in bed. <gasps> really? That's crazy. It is, isn't it? I think the friend is worse than the husband. So gross. How could she do that to her best friend? Right? Well, the woman was going to die anyway, so she probably thought it was okay. Ugh, no, no. Stacy leans her head on Gia's lap. You can have everything when I die. But if you die, I get everything you have. Oh, shoot. Gia's trying to act like she's not terrified because Stacy basically murdered her. Murdered her, murdered her. Okay. But the asshole manager, Kim, calls her to his desk and she pushes Stacy's head off. Manager Kim is flipping through her proposal. So she works in marketing. Miss Kang, when are you going to get your touch back? You don't like my proposal, sir? Is it that bad? Bad? That would be saying it nicely. This just sucks. It sucks. My idea was a meal kit proposal for single households. This is what Gia is saying, okay? Manager Kim initially turned it down, but later what she remembers from the past is that Stacy asked if she could use the idea, the same proposal. She said, hey Gia, I wanna change up your proposal and try proposing it again. But she submitted it without changing a single freaking word and manager Kim loved it. And that got Stacy promoted to a full-time employee and later she gets promoted to a manager. So manager likes Stacy. Yeah, because she dresses like very, you know, cute and she plays the game. But Gia dresses in baggy clothes, does not play the game. And manager Kim is like, does this make sense to you? Single household meal kit? Why would someone alone even cook? Add water to a pot and boil it. How f***ing bothersome. And the green onions are vacuum sealed? Jeez, freeze dried squid? Opening all these packages is gonna take the whole freaking day. Doesn't make sense to you? The development team will be like, why don't they just do it themselves? Are you listening, Miss Kang? Sir, could you tell me what the proposal is lacking so I can edit it? <sighs> That's the problem with you women. They're so dependent. You need to figure oh, it out shit. yourself. Uh, also try to be considerate of others when you come to work. Why are you dressed like that? You dress like you're already married. How are men supposed to interpret that? This is why our country should make military service mandatory for women too. At least Miss Yang over there is married. That's why she dresses like that. What's your excuse? Wait, what, what, what's so going on? So she's dressing in like trousers and a dress shirt with like an oversized vest on top. And he's like, you're dressing ugly. He wants them to wear pencil skirts if they're not married. That is so it's just, incredibly... It's just a lawsuit. Yeah. 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 It's just, I don't know what to say. It's just a lawsuit. Yeah. What? Meanwhile, in the back, Stacy is spritzing perfume while her best friend is getting ripped in two. <laughs> so there's that. Gia goes to the break room to copy some papers and she sees a cup of coffee that's about to spill over on the ledge. And she remembers 10 years ago in the same situation, she jumped to grab the coffee. It hit her leg, resulting in a serious, nasty bruise. This time... She knows what to expect. So she avoids injuring her leg by high jumping over the cardboard boxes and she catches the coffee. And she's like, I just changed history. <laughs> but two seconds later, she gets hit by a trolley in the hallway and realizes that she can't avoid getting hurt in the same spot too. Mm. So what does that mean? What does that mean? She tried to avoid getting hurt, but she couldn't. Does that mean she's still going to get murdered in 10 years? No, no. Like, no, she can't be thinking about that right now. Side note, apparently the scar on her arm was not from her cancer treatments. It was from her burning herself with water. The same scar that is now on Richard, but she doesesn't have that scar anymore. So it's weird. G is going back to her seat in the office and she's thinking about all of this. It almost seems like fate is inevitable, but it's not tied to a person. 
So instead of she getting cancer, someone else could. Instead of her getting the scar from boiling water,、right. Richard got it.、Mm. Uh huh.、Wow. So Gia goes back to her seat in the office and gets a message from Michael. Pictures that he sold his Rogiental stock. You sold Rogiental? I sold my stocks to pay you back. That's how much you mean to me. But don't worry, I still have TKU Technology. If they do well, it's going to be huge for me. So I have no regrets about selling Rogiental. Just remember, I sold very incredible stocks for you. But Gia remembers that TKU Technology is going to get exposed several years later for a whole bunch of fraud for not paying employees. The stock eventually gets delisted. So Michael now has horrible stock, but Gia bought up all the Rogiental she could afford, and she's not going to say anything about it. This is interesting. Originally in 2013, he did not sell Rogiental.、Mm-hmm. Remember, that's his only success in life. Does, so does that mean everything must go somewhere? The water burn mark, the stocks. Because she bought Rajiental, Michael sold it. The universe needs balance, which means what's going to happen is bound to happen. Even if it doesn't happen to her, it just has to happen、Ooh. to someone. Oh. Gia finishes up her work and goes to the elevator, where Stacy catches up with her. How's your injury? Gia is lost in thought about the balance of the universe and whatnot, and she turns to Stacy. Stacy, I have some trash to throw away. Will you do it for me? What are you talking about? Please. You're my other half. Fine, okay, but in return, you have to hang out with me this weekend. I found a yummy barbecue restaurant. It's called Kosari Jal. You want to come? Yeah, let's do it. As long as you throw out my trash. Gia watches Stacy run over to Michael and start flirting with him during the meeting. And inside her head, she's thinking, "You've been coveting my trash. You've been jealous of my trash. Well, then you take it out." Gia realizes that someone needs to steal her fate. In order for her not to die,、mm. someone needs to take her place and marry Michael.、Ooh. Marry my husband. That's how it works, <laughs> and she knows it has to be Stacy. Stacy has to have everything that's Gia's. So the next day at work, Gia comes in with her coffee, and inside the elevator, it's her, Stacy, manager Kim, the boss, and the general manager, higher up, soon to be CEO Richard Daddy. Okay. It's a little awkward. So Richard right now is above the other manager. Yeah, but he nobody knows he's the founder's grandson.、Ah. They think he's just a manager, a higher manager. Yeah,、mm. they don't know. It's a little awkward, but manager Kim tries to make small talk, or he just wants to yell at someone. I don't know. Manager Kim's looking at Gia. Gia, are you working on your proposal? I'm not gonna hold back if it sucks again. Yes, sir. I'm working very diligently on it. Stacy glances at the general manager, Richard. <laughs> It's her chance to be a pick me, Mr. Kim. If you say it like that, it looks like our Gia does nothing, but she works very hard. <gasps> Is that the good coffee from across the street, Gia? Manager Kim smirks. Look, look, look at this little slacker. You left work during work hours to buy coffee. I'm sorry, sir. I grabbed it on my way back in. See what I mean? They're never working. Women, all they want to do is eat yummy. Richard slams his fist on the elevator, and everybody goes silent. He doesn't even say anything else. And then they all get to the floor. Richard stops Gia. Miss Kang, come with me for a moment. And they go up to the rooftop, and Richard is like, "Drink your coffee." She thinks he's gonna scold her even more for the coffee, and this is like some sort of weird punishment. Uh, sir, would you like my coffee? I haven't even touched it with my mouth yet, and to be honest, I skipped breakfast, and that's why I. You should start eating breakfast. Now drink the coffee. It would be awkward for you to drink it alone in the office. Hey, why? Why is Richard into her? You'll see. Oh. But not in this episode. You won't see. Oh. That's why I called you out here. Thank you. Oh, right. I decided not to quit my job. By the way, do you want to see something? And Gia pulls out her bill that the taxi driver gave her with the heart on it, aka her dad. And she said, "My dad gave it to me. Whenever my dad would give me allowance, he always drew a heart on it. And I told him not to draw on money like that, but I guess he couldn't stop. This is the kind of love that my dad gave me, and that's why I'm not quitting. Also, you said that I was talented, and that really helped me make up my mind. Honestly, it's been so long that I forgot what I wanted, and it's I've been busy just trying to get by. But I don't want to live like that anymore. So." Thank you. Richard smiles, and she says, "Did you just smile? It's my first time seeing you smile. By any chance, Gia, do you have plans this weekend?" And at this very see moment, Stacy runs onto the rooftop to ruin everything. I already made plans with Gia this weekend. 
She comes over and loops her arm around Jia. What? You already forgot, Jia? I booked a table at Ko Sarijong. It's a great barbecue restaurant. Richard looks very serious. Ko Sarijong? Yes. Do you know of the place? I've heard of it. Okay, then. And Richard walks off. And Stacy tries to convince Jia to take her to the yummy coffee spot. But she's like, sorry, I'm very busy right now. And Stacy's really pissed off. Because Jia always does what Stacy wants. So Stacy's alone in the elevator talking to herself. And she's saying, Jia... This is no longer fun. I saved you from working this weekend and you can't even have coffee with me? Mm. I hate this. Meanwhile, inside Richard Daddy's office, he's looking up Gia's employee file and her records show that she went to Teha High School in Busan. He picks up the phone and calls somebody. Hi, is this Ko Sarjong? I wanted to confirm a reservation for this weekend. Busan Teha High School reunion at 6? Oh, it's at 5.30 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Now, wait a freaking minute. How does he know? How does he know that the boiling water was going to fall on her? How does he know that there's a high school reunion at the barbecue spot? How does he know? So he found out that she's going to this restaurant this weekend. But at the same time, he knows there's a reunion going on in the yeah. same place. Yeah. Huh. Okay. How does he know? Then Richard makes another call to his assistant. Hey, Dong Seok, can you find someone for me? He hangs up when Gia walks in through the door and she's got a box of painkillers in her hand. Your scar must really hurt. I heard if you feel even a little bit of pain, you should take painkillers preemptively. Did you take some? Your injury must hurt too on your knee. I think you need this more than I do. Thank you, but I'm okay. Don't worry about it. Richard takes the box and splits them in half. Okay, El Chapo. Okay, and he gives her half the the painkillers. They're over the counter, okay? I'm glad you prepared, but you need to take care of yourself first. He hands her the other half and she walks out. And guess who's watching this all through the glass window? Michael, who angrily texts Gia to meet him in the storage room now. She starts walking to the storage room and Michael grabs her arm and drags her in. And in the storage room, he's like, did you dump me for Richard? What? He's young. He's the general manager. He's hot. So you think he's got the power, huh? That's what you think, right? But you only know half the story, you sneaky little temptress. I told you, for men, you need to look at their looks and their sense. <laughs> Why are you smirking? Why are you laughing? What? You got something going on with him? She apologizes in her head to Richard because she's about to throw him under the bus. She's got a plan. Gia needs to be back with Michael. Stacy needs to steal her fate, but Stacy only wants what Gia has. So if Gia is not with Michael, Stacy will not steal her fate. <sighs> ah, because Richard asked me to bring him a Band-Aid? He asked you for a Band-Aid? The crazy old Fart. How could he do that to someone who's obviously hurt? How sadistic. I'm not going to stand for this. Michael starts storming out. I don't know what he thinks he's going to do, but Gia <laughs> stops him. Michael, I asked to break up because our relationship just wasn't the same as it used to be. <sighs> she starts shaking her shoulders back and forth. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, uh, She's like trying to gag, okay? What do you mean? What is it? Were you upset because you thought I wasn't into you anymore? Mm. I want a relationship that everyone's envious of. I wish you were someone that I could be proud of and any woman would want to steal. What? Who cares what other people think? Our feelings are what matter. Gia, you... I thought you were being silly, but I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what the f*** is going on? Okay, fine. I'll pay you more attention from now on. What? Now let's make up. Okay. She claps like, okay. And he's trying to walk out, but he grabs her and pushes her up against the wall again for the 20th time in this show. Oh my God. He's trying to do it. Stop. We're at work. So no one's coming. Someone's going to come. I can hear them. But they're not. He tries to go in for the kiss and his phone starts ringing. Wait, you have a call coming. Oh, it's just my mom reminding me to take my meds. Ignore it. He goes in for a kiss, but luckily for Gia, Mrs. Yang, the other married employee, remember? She was actually supposed to be manager, but manager Kim, the evil guy, stole her promotion. She walks in, Michael runs out, and Gia is left there holding a wrench. Yeah, she was going to whack him if nobody came in. <laughs> Miss Yang is alone with Gia, and she says, I know it's not my place, but even between lovers, unwanted physical contact is bad. Gia doesn't say anything, but she's very shaken. Sorry, I, I don't want to overstep, but I was just reminded of my past. I have a lot of regrets, and Gia, you seem like a smart person. Don't make the same mistakes that I did. 
They walk out together and it's lunchtime in the office. Michael asks Gia what she wants for lunch and Stacy responds like, ma'am, he's not talking to you. Gia, let's go get Indian food. I'm craving curry. Oh, sorry, Stacy. I'm broke lately. They have stir fried pork at the cafeteria, so I'm just going to eat that. But if you're craving curry, Michael could take you to get Indian food. <sighs> it's fine. If you want to eat stir fried pork, then I'll eat it too. They all agree to eat in the cafeteria, but Gia can sense Stacy is upset that she's not getting the food that she wants. And she remembers this moment from 10 years ago. Stacy took out her anger by, quote, accidentally making Gia trip, getting food spilled all over her and embarrassing her in front of the whole freaking cafeteria. And now Gia staring at Stacy as she's piling up the juiciest kimchi onto her plate with the soupiest red pork soups. She's getting ready to trip her. It is so clear. This goes evil, evil. But this time, Gia is prepared. Even 10 years ago, Gia knew what Stacy was doing, but she put up with it because she thought that Stacy was the only one that she had, but not anymore. Gia is prepared for Stacy to trip her, so she moves out of the way, sticks out her foot, and Stacy trips instead. Stacy trips and takes down Michael with her, spilling all of her red food on Michael. Stacy looks shocked and horrified. Oh no! Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? I'm so sorry. Michael's pissed. His shirt is designer and there's red sauce all over it. Gia takes a moment, smirking, and then she turns around. <gasps> Babe, are you hurt? Isn't this your favorite shirt? Authentique? It's all ruined now. What do we do? Oh, give me a napkin. Napkin, right. Gia goes to the bathroom to grab napkins and she hears a voice from one of the stalls. Excuse me, is someone there? I, I need some help. <laughs> Do you need a sanitary pad? Yes! Uh, just a moment, I'll get it for you. She grabs a pad and the girl walks out of the stall. It's <laughs> Hannah, the girl that sits in front of Gia in the cubicles. She's gonna be very important, okay? But they never really talked, they were just coworkers. But Hannah is profusely thanking Gia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I was wondering who saved my life and it's already somebody that I know. And I promise that I'm gonna pay you back properly one day. Oh, um, there's no need for that, it was nothing. And, um, oh, Hannah. Let me see. She turns Hannah around and there's blood on Hannah's white pants. Gia takes off her own sweater, wraps it around Hannah's waist, covering up the stain. And Hannah's eyes are wide. She's covering her mouth. She's in love. This is her superwoman moment. And Hannah is fainting. Hannah is like the comical best friend, okay? Hannah's fainting. How are you so nice? You're an incredible Samaritan. I thought they don't even exist anymore. This is the type of kindness that you really only see in films. You are the light of my life. You're my savior. And you're so pretty. And you're pretty and kind. And she is laughing. Were you always this? Was this always your personality? It, it, that's a lot. But uh, I think anyone else would have done what I did. No, they wouldn't have. Someone came in before you did. And I sincerely asked for help. But she just grumbled, finished her business and left. Dang, really now? Have you eaten? I noticed that we never shared a meal together. Would you like to join us for lunch today? So Gia brings Hannah to the table. So now it's Gia, Hannah, Stacy, and Michael. Michael with the shit stains on his shirt, Michael. I mean, I hate this man, okay? Stacy doesn't like that Hannah is smiling at Gia. Gia, what took you so long? You were just going to grab napkins, no? I found Hannah in the restroom and she had an emergency. Babe, is your shirt okay? Is it ruined? And her inner dialogue, Gia's thinking to herself, I bet Michael's fucking pissed. He begged me for a year to buy that shirt. I'm really sorry, Michael. I'll buy you another one. It's fine. It's just a shirt. Don't worry about it. Hannah looks over. Isn't that a luxury brand? Authentique? That shirt must be like $1,300. Michael laughs. And Gia says, oh, no, don't worry, Stacy. It's not that much. Just like $1,200. Oh, wow. I just don't have that kind of money. I'm just a temporary employee. Who and said that? Stacy. She's mm -hmm. looking up at Michael, giving him flirty eyes. And Michael's like, hey, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Just eat, eat. Is it really okay? You're so competent. You're always so generous. You're the best. Tickle, tickle. The best, best, best. Yeah, I, I got a lot of shirts at home. Don't worry about it, Stacy. Stacy, you're also the best, best, best. <laughs> Please eat. eat. Uh, I wanted this to happen. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> best. What? You're so generous, Michael. And they're both giggling and smiling at each other, basically flirting. We call it a sing show in Korean. You know what a sing show is? It's like, bro, I don't even know what I'm looking at. That's what a sing show is. You see two people and you're like, wow, they're doing something, okay? 
<laughs> there's something they're not on this planet hannah is disgusted as well because everybody in the office knows that gia and michael are dating but she starts digging in and hannah is eating like a normal person and michael points it out wow hannah you can really put it away <laughs> <laughs> yeah you've got quite the appetite how can a woman eat so much that's stacy women or men we all have to eat to do important work my grandfather taught me that so does your grandfather do important work he sells bean sprouts, tofu, and seasonings. So he sells side dishes. Gia cuts in. You must get your energy from him. Koreans get energy from food. That's right. Correct. That's where I get it from. Stacy pouts at her food. As a picky eater, I am doomed then. I wish I could eat like Gia. Come to think of it, Gia can pretty much stomach anything. She could digest steel. Isn't that right, Gia? Gia kind of rolls her eyes. <laughs> right. Michael looks amused and disgusted that his girlfriend consumes food. Like, wait till this guy finds out that girls take shits, okay? <sighs> Crazy. And he's like, R really, Gia? Well, now that I think about it, I remember one day we went out to go eat soup. She eats like an old man, like an ajashi, just gobbling it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ajashi, ajashi. He's like taunting her, calling her ajashi. Stacy's like, Michael, you shouldn't say that to her. You need to love her no matter what. Also, this is literally how she fucking talks. I'm just letting you know. Don't get annoyed at me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Michael's like, right, love's important. Gia, you're lucky to have a friend like Stacy. Gia starts straight up choking on her rice, okay? And Hannah gets up. I'll bring you some water. Stacy speaks up. Mine too. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Since you're going anyway. Michael cuts in. Oh, me as well. Hannah smiles. Okay, since you came to work anyway, could you do my job too? And she walks off. Oh, and Stacy's like, what the hell? That little brat, how dare she talk to me like that? Stacy, don't talk about Hannah that way. We're at work. Hannah is young, but she's the same rank as you. Stacy's in shock and Gia realizes that it's too obvious that she fucking hates their guts. So she catches herself and says, I I I'm gonna have a conversation about it with her. Michael pipes in. Yeah, talk to her, will you, babe? She's so rude. Unbelievable. You know what? I'll go now. Michael, do you mind staying with Stacy? She's such a picky eater that she's not going to eat unless someone helps her. She's not like me. I can eat anything. Bye. And she just walks off. She goes to find Hannah. Hannah, I'm sorry. I cleared your tray. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm sorry for lashing out. I should have bit my tongue. I recognized her voice right away, though. The woman who ignored me in the restroom, it was Stacy. So after lunch, Stacy and Michael are taking the elevator back to the office. And Stacy's like, I think Gia's angry. They're waiting for the elevator. I think it's because I ruined your shirt. Come on. You know she's not like that. Gia is worried about you and you're eating earlier. She cares so much about you. You think so? She's so indifferent sometimes. She doesn't know how much I care about her. The elevator doors open and they get shoved into the elevator with like 20 other people. And of course, Michael is forced to basically dry hump Stacy and Stacy seems to really like it. But Michael, he looks very uncomfortable, but not because he doesn't like it. And he has a girlfriend and he's loyal and this is his girlfriend's best friend. But because he looks like he's about to create his own brand of coffee creamer in the elevator. I'm sorry. I didn't know how else to put it. The man looks like he's about to burst. Okay. The elevator opens, more people come in, and they're basically pushed up on each other, and they're facing each other. So Stacy, she's got this evil look in her face, and she leans in even more and whispers in his ear, this is so awkward, but you smell really good. What perfume do you use? In the middle of the elevator? Yeah. What? And then she leans back and smells, smells so good. And she's like whispering to him. Oh. <sighs> They get to the office meeting where Hannah is passing out proposal sheets for everyone and manager Kim walks in. What the hell is this? These are the materials for the meeting? I told you not to do this. Oh my God, can anyone in this room do anything right? Can't you show more respect for your work? What is this? Gia thinks to herself, when someone is incompetent, they make a big deal over small things that they actually know how to do, like staples. Pick me, Stacy chimes in in the meeting. Hannah, you have to staple it diagonally, like this, at an angle. Staple? Exactly my point, Stacy. You know your stuff. Hannah, go and print them again. All of it? That's such a waste of paper. Exactly. Several trees were wasted because of you. I want you to understand that. Stacy gets up. 
I'm sure they understand, Mr. Kim. Gio, why don't you get the manager some coffee? Mm. And Stacy cozies up to the manager, Kim. Sir, will you take a look at my proposal? I need to become a full-time employee. Maybe we could get some air while we look at it. Manager Kim is looking at Stacy's legs and he's getting all flustered. Stacy's leaning down so that he can see a bit more into her shirt. She's unbuttoned the top button and he's sweating. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. They go out and Stacy's like, I have a secret I need to tell you, Mr. Kim. A secret? I need to get a full-time position at this company. And I have this idea and I, I can't seem to organize my thoughts. I, I could help you with that. Really? Thank you so much. It's nothing. I mean, there's so many hags and ugly women at this company. They're just discouraging for our team. We urgently need a full-time employee like you. Stop it. You're so funny, Mr. Kim. Meanwhile, Gia decides to talk to Mrs. Yang on the rooftop about her meal kit proposal since manager Kim does not take her seriously. And Mrs. Yang is like the right-hand employee. She's like the next higher up. Single household meal kit? Is this not the proposal that Mr. Kim rejected? What's the point of me looking at it again? Please just read it for me. And if you still don't like it, then we'd never have to talk about it again. She's plotting something. But so is Richard. Richard is skirskaring around town trying to snoop around in Gia's life. He's hunting down a guy named Chef Elby. He's like a Michelin star chef who used to go to the same school as Gia. He was actually Gia's very first crush in high school. So there's that. I don't know why he's going out. I don't know if he's going to knock them out all one by one, all the men in Gia's life. It's weird. It seems like he's trying to convince Elby to attend the reunion party at the barbecue spot. So the next day, Gia and Hannah are eating lunch together when Gia gets a message on her phone. Hannah, I'm so sorry. I, something came up at work. I have to go back to the office. You want me to eat all of this on my own? Oh my God, you can't keep giving me gifts like this. Are you free on Sunday? We need to hang out so that I can pay you back. Sunday? Oh, um, I don't think I can on Sunday. Why? Do you have plans? I do have plans. Uh, actually, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go. <laughs> what kind of plans is it? School reunion? Oh, then you have to go. You should go see your first love and then get disappointed and then move on with your life. Isn't that what's the point of school reunions? Yeah, but no one even knows where my first love lives or where he is. Plus, I wasn't very popular at school, so why go and dig up a shameful past? But isn't that more reason to go? Like, if you don't go, the shameful will remain the shameful. And But if you go, you fix it, and it just becomes a part of your history. Gia's like, I'll think about it. She runs back to work and bumps into Richard in the lobby. Okay, well, she doesn't really bump into him, right? But they walk past each other and he's desperately looking like he wants to say something, but he doesn't know what to say. So they just like walk around. And then she turns around and says, sir, you asked me if I was free on Sunday. If it's urgent, I can come in for work if you need. Didn't you have plans? I do, but it's not as important as work. Work comes first and I think um, that's how I want to go about it. You come first, Miss Kang. <laughs> well, to be honest, I was debating whether or not I wanted to go to the original plans. You should go. Just remember that you owe me. And he walks off. So cryptic. But Gia got plans. Okay, so she runs up to the rooftop where Mrs. Yang is standing with her proposal. This is good. You read it? Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Do you want to do it together? That's not how things work in this company. Mr. Kim has a different perspective than us. He hasn't even read it, Mrs. Yang. That's that scoundrel. He, what? I watched him just pretend to flip through it. He pretended to read it. This isn't the first time either. I see him shoot down your ideas all the time. He barely works. He does whatever he wants here. And he thinks that's power. He just flips through proposals while watching TV to act like he's doing something. Ever since he hit on you and you turned him down, he opposes every single thing that you say. No, there's no way. It's work. Gia realizes that Mrs. Yang has been gaslit for so long to even realize the truth. I know he was promoted to manager after he turned in your proposal with his name on it. And Gia's thinking, just like Stacy became a full-time employee with her proposal. She remembers the past. And Mrs. Yang is like, he's my superior. It's normal that the manager takes credit for the entire team's work. But you've never done that. I'm confident in this proposal, Mrs. Yang. You know that this is a good proposal. But Mr. Kim rejected it. Okay, if I can prove to you that Mr. Kim hasn't read my proposal to begin with, he rejected it on Monday. I'm going to turn it in again today without changing a single word, just the font, just the color. And once you're sure that he hasn't read it, will you do this with me? What? Okay, yeah. 
Mrs. Yang and Gia shake hands. It's a deal. So Gia goes to her desk, changes the font and colors of her proposal, none of the words or the graphs, and goes up to manager Kim's desk in front of everyone, including Mrs. Yang, and submits in her edited proposal. Mr. Kim, will you look over this? It's the new edited version. The title is exactly the same. Meal kit proposal for single households. Are you messing with me? He flips through it. The proposal that you gave me last time. I don't believe this. The proposal that you gave me last week was so much better than this, huh? How did it get worse? Come on, I've seen bad workers, but you're just fucking terrible. You're just lazy. If you're too lazy to work, then why don't you just do me a favor and quit instead of torturing me like this? Oh my gosh, Mr. Kim, I'm so sorry. I accidentally gave you the same proposal for Monday. The new proposal is on my desk. Here's the new one, this one. Mr. Kim looks dumbfounded and everyone is looking at him and he looks shy all of a sudden. They all whispering around the office. He didn't even recognize it was the same one. He really doesn't work. He never fails to disappoint us, huh? <laughs> a few minutes later, Gia and Mrs. Yang meet in the break room and they share a cup of coffee. Okay, I was hesitant, but now I realize that even the title was the same and he didn't get it. Now I get why things never went my way. I just can't believe it. How did I trust and work for someone like him for so long? I know. I told you, Mrs. Yang, he doesn't work, but you and I are going to kill this meal kit. It's going to be huge, quick, easy, consumable meals for people. Hannah walks in and she's given a cup of coffee too. They all cheers and Stacy is watching angrily through the glass wall. She feels jealous. So she decides to take matters into her own hands and invites Mr. Kim out for dinner after work. Girl is hustling for this full-time employment. She meets with him at a barbecue spot. So Stacy, why'd you ask me on a date after work? Because of the secret. Um, the secret I was telling you about. Oof, the word secret gets me so excited. Wait, didn't you say that you had pork for lunch? That's two pork meals in a row. Doesn't that suck for you? Oh no, not at all, Mr. Kim. Korean pork is the most yummy thing in the world. Behind her, there's a sign on the wall that says all the pork is imported. So. <laughs> Stacy, you're such a nice woman. Stop it. <laughs> no, my friend Gia is much better than me. Kim starts choking on his food. Why do you always have to bring that girl up? Do you like her that much? I just can't understand woman. Well, she's different from me. She went to Korea University in Seoul. She's smart, ambitious. Korea University? So what? Kids from there only know how to study. In the real world, they're useless. Her proposal was ridiculous and not realistic at all. I bet she doesn't think that way. She'll say that you won't appreciate it and that you have bad taste. That's what she'll think. I have bad taste? Listen, Stacy, you must be insecure about your academic background. Don't be like that. University, it's all pointless. I mean, I'm just saying, her idea could be good. I mean, it's really messy, but the idea could be good. You should take it. We could develop it together. I think it'll be a hit. With you? T together? Yeah. Gia would ruin it if she had to develop it. But with your skills and experience, I feel like this could be my ticket to a full-time offer. Oh, gosh, I feel so comfortable around you to tell you stuff like this about work. It's like we're more than just co-workers. Mr. Kim immediately starts having a vision of Stacy giving birth in the hospital and they're having a whole ass family together, getting married, moving in together, and his crusty ass is falling for everything Stacy is saying. Tell me more about this proposal. Tell Opa everything. Sure, let's drink first. Cheers. Meanwhile, Michael is bowling with the dudes and he's complaining about how Stacy is Gia's friend so he can't even try and sleep with her. But his friends are like, nah, bro, just do it. She seems into you too, so just go for it. But he's going crazy. Michael's like, I need some girls to sleep with. What about Gia, your actual girlfriend? Oh. <laughs> She's just marriage material, you know? What are you even talking about, bro? She's nice, she's frugal, and she takes care of my parents. She works hard for money and then she doesn't spend it. How's that for marriage material? You know, that That's is- That's so fucked up. So he actually sees her just yeah. good enough for a wife. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That's the only reason he wants yeah. to date her. That's it. That is crazy. And the guys are like, actually, that is the definition of a perfect wife. <laughs> guys are like valid valid <laughs> valid worth worth <laughs> but also uh perfectly fucking boring that's what it is she reads the company outlook report nobody fucking reads that <laughs> i bet she's at work what, right now what do you mean, like the vision yeah i bet she's at work right now looking over her documents 
fixing her glasses like this. Oh. Ah! At the same time, that is what she's doing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Stacy's talking shit to about Gia to their manager. And Gia's at her desk fixing her glasses. And she sees a little gift bag on her desk from Authentique, the luxury brand that everyone on this show is freaking obsessed with for some reason. I don't know. A real brand? I don't know if it's a real brand that sponsored the shit out of this show. Or is it a fake brand? I can't tell. Oh. Because also the name Authentique is like kind of weird. Yeah. Like it's like having a designer brand and naming it very real, I promise. <laughs> like it's like, yeah, okay. Or naming it designer. <laughs> designer. <laughs> <laughs> so she opens it up and it's a pair of diamond earrings with a card that reads, I got these for you to match with me. Couple earrings. Wear them for our dinner date on Sunday. Your eternal love, your other half, Stacy. Gia gets a flashback to her past life where she went to that Cho Sarjong restaurant, the Korean barbecue restaurant, expecting it to really just be a dinner date between her and Stacy. She wore super casual clothes and she was traumatized to find out that Stacy lied. It was not a casual dinner date, okay? It was a high school reunion and all of Gia's bullies were there and laughing at her for wearing a tracksuit, sweatpants, hoodie to the reunion. Bro. In the flashback, yeah. You can make fun of someone for wearing tracksuits. Oh, yeah. Korea, like, you really don't. You do dress up a bit more, especially for reunions. It's kind of weird. But you wouldn't make fun of them, so I don't know why they're doing that. Yeah. But it is, like, out of place for sure. <sighs> but still, I don't know why you would make fun of someone. Yeah, exactly. It. It'd just be like, oh, they're underdressed or, oh, they're overdressed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the flashback, Gia takes Stacy aside to confront her. Are we not eating alone? I thought this was just us. I didn't think you'd come if I told you what was really going on. Come on, we're in our 30s now. Forget about the past. Let's go see all of our old friends. Gia panics and runs to the bathroom to hide in the bathroom stall, which, um, same. Okay, moments later, her three biggest bullies from high school that we're just going to call Regina, Gretchen, and Karen from Mean Girls because they're NPCs. They don't have names, okay? And Gia, and they're talking about Gia. Gia's got some balls showing up here when she's got no friends. Did you see her? She looks like she's broke. She must be here to get free food. Still, how is she hanging out with Stacy? <sighs> Stacy's such a softy. Clearly, Gia doesn't look like she can afford a place like this without Stacy. As this is happening, Gia gets flashbacks to the mean girls bullying her in high school by pouring milk all over her hair. And Stacy would stand up to the bullies by telling them, Guys, stop. Don't do that. We shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> In the restaurant bathroom, the main girls are still shit talking. Stacy is way too nice. We have to protect her. Did you see Gia's earrings? I could tell it was a knockoff from a mile away. Ever since high school, Gia has been copying our Stacy. Wait, Gia wasn't at her seat earlier. The girls start aggressively kicking open the doors of the bathroom stalls until they kick open Gia's stall where she's sitting curled up on the toilet. Why are you hiding in here, you sly little bitch, pretending like you're not actually here? Gia wakes up from her traumatic memories like she's waking up from a nightmare. She's working late. She's the only one left at the office. She grabs Stacy's present and heads out and her phone is blowing up. It's Stacy. You've been really distant lately. I'm sad about it, Gia. And I'm not just saying this because I'm drunk. I'm being serious right now. I'm going to sleep over tonight. We can spend the whole weekend together and then go to Koh Sujung on Sunday for our dinner date. On her way out, she bumps into Richard. Are you leaving? Yes. Are you just getting back to work? I have some things that need to be taken care of. I see. Well, I should get going now. Thank you. Wait, just a moment. He stops her and he's staring at that bag in her hands. Oh, this? Um, I got them as a gift. Those are counterfeit. People who can tell, can tell. You shouldn't wear those. Gia gets a flashback in her past life where she was wearing them in the elevator. And Richard told her those were fake and she shouldn't wear those because people can tell. And she thought that he was just being an ass. Oh, this did happen in the past too. But now she's realizing it seems like he just wanted to protect her. Mm. Sorry. I, I mean, thank you. Shall I take you home? What? It's very late. Oh, no, it's fine. The buses are still running. I would like to take you home. I'll have to decline. I have plans with my boyfriend. No. <laughs> Is it? I'm so stressed. When I saw this scene, I was so stressed, okay? But she's gotta, she's gotta play the game. Someone needs to steal her fate. 
I really try to be health conscious, but these days I never know what sources I can trust. Like maybe that's on me for getting my information on TikTok, but there's so many trending diets and they're constantly changing. Like one week, eggs are bad for you and you need to be plant-based. Next week, bread is bad and you need to go keto. And it's just overwhelming. And I almost always end up tired and hungry. I mean, I'm doing a diet to be healthier. So why do I end up feeling worse about myself? If you can relate to drinking green juices for breakfast and then doing cardio because someone on TikTok told you to, and then not eating donuts when you really crave it, maybe it's time for a new approach because there is a better way and a more sustainable way to reach your health and weight loss goals. And that's the Row Body program. Row Body will support you through every step of your health and weight loss journey. They're already working with over 200,000 people and they have helped individuals lose 15 to 20% of their weight in just one year. And the best part is there's no crash dieting, there's no rebound weight gain, and these people are keeping the weight off. Not only will you get access to health experts who will help you create a sustainable weight loss plan, but if you need additional help, Row also provides access to the most popular weight loss shots on the market. If eligible, your healthy weight loss plan will be paired with weekly medications to help you reach your goals faster. The best part about Row is how convenient it is. You don't need to schedule any appointments or even leave your house. You can sign up online from the comfort of your own home. So if you want real results, don't get swept up in the trends. With Row, average weight loss is 15 to 20% in one year with healthy lifestyle changes. BMI and other eligibility criteria apply. Go to Roe.co slash baking. Sign up today and you'll pay just $99 for your first month and $145 a month after that. Medication costs are separate. That's ro.co slash baking. I feel like I have seasonal skin peeves that rotate every season. Like in the summer, my skin just gets so easily irritated. It looks red and splotchy some days. And in the winter, it's just so dry. I feel like a dehydrated raisin. But the worst part is the pet peeve that bothers me the most year round is when my lips get dry. I hate that feeling. Oh my gosh, I hate it so much. Did you know that most lip balms aren't actually hydrating to your lips at all? Plus, if you're wearing lip gloss or lipstick, you can't even really put lip balm over it. Then you just end up looking like you put on cracked paint on your lips. It's not cute. Thankfully, I found a lip product that solves all of my problems and it's from Thrive Cosmetics. The product name is kind of a mouthful, but like you'll get why. It's called the Sheer Strength Lip Plumping Peptide Gloss. The name sounds really intense and it's because it is in the best way possible. This product is an all-in-one everything that my lips need in one product. When I film these podcasts, RM, bam. I mean, my lips get so dry because I get so dehydrated. I'm talking for like sometimes three hours straight, non-stop. I rarely reapply with Thrive's Cosmetics. It's the perfect combination of lip care and it's just so beautiful to look at. It's ultra hydrating for 12 hours of hydration, but it's also lip plumping. And here's the thing, most lip plumping products use, um, I can't even pronounce the word. It's the ingredient that makes pepper spicy and that's why your mouth stings when you eat spicy food, but it, it can be bad for your lips if you're overusing it. Plus it can irritate yourself. Thrive's Lip Plumper uses a combination of peptides and hyaluronic acid to plump your lips so there is no stinging, no discomfort, Comfort and you get better results with less potential side effects. You can also choose from 10 different shades. Thrive Cosmetics beauty products are certified 100% vegan and cruelty-free. They're made with skin-loving ingredients that your skin will thank you for. And if you buy from Thrive, they're actually giving back to the community. For every product purchased, Thrive Cosmetics donates to support important social causes. They support education for youth, social justice, LGBTQ+, poverty, and countless other important causes. Thrive Cosmetics is luxury beauty that gives back. Right now, you can get an exclusive 20% off your first order at thrivecosmetics.com slash bake. That's Thrive Cosmetics. C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash bake for 20% off your first order. So Gia heads home and on her way, she stops at the liquor store to buy some hard liquor. She invited both Stacy and Michael to her apartment and her plan is to get them both wasted and just have it hurry up. Hook up already. Let's get to it. You know what I mean? Let's get it moving. She figures it's got to happen anyway. So let's just rip the bandage off. But when she gets home, she doesn't expect to find Michael already there showering and flexing in the bathroom mirror. Meanwhile, Stacy decides not to come over. Oh. Uh- yeah, it's because Stacy texted Gia all of these heart hearts, cute emojis, and then Gia just texted her back, okay, then come over. And Stacy was like, no emoji? I'm not coming over. <laughs> and Gia's like, fuck, now I'm alone with Michael. And Michael is in the bathroom fully naked except a towel. And she turns around and Michael is leaning up against the wall <laughs> in just a towel. Hey, babe. You got here pretty fast. I thought it would take you longer. I couldn't wait to spend the night with you, so I took a taxi. (laughs) (laughs) You you really didn't have to do that. 
He starts coming closer to her. It's been such a long time, hasn't it? He's grabbing her face. He's pushing her towards the bed. Yeah, it really has. So I was thinking we should talk first. He pushes her on the bed, climbs on talk. Let's talk with our bodies. Let's put some clothes on. He pushes his stinky finger in front of her mouth. Shh. We don't need any clothes. Michael rips open his bath towel, completely exposes himself, and he kind of helicopters it. <laughs> and Gia starts screaming, probably at the sight. She's horrified. She's never seen such a small wee-wee before. Just when we think something really bad is about to happen, there's a knock at the door. She throws him onto the bed, runs to the door, and opens it. Hi there. Delivery from Fry Me. Did you order hot fried chicken, spicy chicken, and salty soy sauce chicken? Uh, no. M Michael, did you order delivery? Oh, wait, I got it wrong. You got the fried chicken, spicy chicken, and soy sauce chicken, not the salty soy sauce chicken, and the large fries and the cola are on the house. I'm sorry, but I, Michael puts on his pants and he's butting in. Hey, bro, we didn't order anything, okay? Just get lost. Just a second. Was it cider, not cola? Didn't you hear me? We didn't order anything. Get lost. But this is the address, apartment 401. Michael runs out and he's now face to face with the delivery driver. I don't care. Just hurry up and go. Like this man is trying to do it tonight, okay? Uh. And the delivery man is like, wait, I have to check first. Just a moment. The delivery man moves away from the door and he pulls out his phone and Gia uses this opportunity to push Michael out into the hallway and lock the apartment door so that he can't get back inside. No way. And he's screaming, Gia, what the hell? Open the door. I'm not the delivery man. Open the door. Gia texts Michael, I'm very flustered by your actions today. What do you think of our relationship? I think I need some space. Sorry. What is she talking about? Are you sick or something? Just open the door. What's wrong with you? Uh -huh. She texts him, just give me some time, please. I'm so sorry. Michael yells, I'm leaving, okay? I'm leaving. She's Christ, you're so weird. She quickly opens the door and throws his shoes at him into the hallway and then closes it again. What the hell? And he goes back up to the door. Gia, listen. I'm not, I know you're not easy, okay? I love your soul more than I love your body. There's nothing to see with your body anyway. You're all skin and bones. So don't, don't misunderstand. It, it wasn't like that. Anyway, good night. He puts on his shoes and walks out. Where we see at the corner of the building, hiding is the delivery man spying on Michael with Richard. And the delivery man is like, that guy creeps me out. I was thinking about going back if he didn't come out. Did you think I did a good job though? Yes, you did a great job. I felt like a spy. It was kind of fun. But w why are we doing this? Through a series of flashbacks, we see that Richard has been busy pulling some strings behind the scenes. He tracked down LB, the chef, who had a huge crush on Gia in high school. But for whatever reason, they never got back together. But they never ended up dating. And now we find out the reason a little bit. So we see young LB approaching a nerdy teenage Gia who looks confused because LB's so mad. What did I do that was so bad, huh? Even regardless of what I did, you shouldn't be like this. From now on, don't ever act like you know me. Gia's so confused. We don't have no idea what happened. But afterwards, after getting rejected, I guess, LB's so heartbroken that he never dated another woman. He became reclusive. He just focused on his culinary passion. We find out that LB even wears a fake wedding ring so that women won't even attempt to flirt with him. He became the head chef at a luxurious restaurant in Seoul close to Gia's workplace, but they never crossed paths until recently. And Richard somehow found out all of this and went to LB's restaurant to convince LB to attend the high school reunion. And it sounds ridiculous because these are like 30 year olds we're talking about, but it does kind of come together. Because we're finally getting to the reunion. Korean barbecue restaurant. Stacy walks into the restaurant wearing a sophisticated looking pink suit. Is it Chanel? We'll never know. It's probably not. It's one of those like old money aesthetics, like trying to be, right? Listen, I actually think it's really cute, but I hate her, so it's fine. And everyone from Stacy's old high school is just fawning over her. Stacy, is that you? You look so pretty. Oh my God, you've always been so pretty. You're so cute. You haven't changed at all. Everybody, Stacy's here. Sit, 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 sit. You look so classy. Ever since you got that promotion at the big company, your whole vibe has changed. You look like a classy city lady now. So Stacy is the popular girl that yeah. everyone likes. Mm -hmm. And Gia is the nerdy girl that gets bullied. Yeah. So why is Stacy so obsessed with Gia, though? That's so odd. Yeah. We don't know. We'll find out. Okay, okay. Oh, I got lucky, guys. Gia supported me a lot through my promotion. Ugh, you still hang out with her? She's my other half. You're too soft. You're still a pushover. What's Gia up to nowadays? Does she still sponge off of you? 
She's modest, but she's gotten prettier actually. She's coming later. I called her. She's coming here? Be nice to her when she shows up, guys. She's having a hard time. And why is that? Remember how I put in a referral and got her a contract job at UNK? Now she has a crush on Michael. Michael? Isn't that the guy that you're dating? Uh, uh, oh, um, it's not like that. So basically, Stacy lied and told all of these high school friends that she has Gia's life, that she's like at this rank at UNK, but it's not her rank. That's actually Gia's rank. Ah, uh, she freaking peaked in high school. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh. And Stacy's like, oh, oh, it's not what you think. It, it's complicated. Please don't bring it up to her, guys. That bitch is at it again, trying to steal your man, trying to steal your life. Wait, guys, please. She's calling me right now. Hey, Gia, where are you? Let me know if you can't find it and I'll come outside and get you. And Gia says behind her, actually, I'm right behind you. And in comes Gia with a fully new hairstyle cut into a chic bob, beautiful dress, dressed like a supermodel ah! in high heels. Ah! But how? Earlier that day, she's trying on all the clothes in her closet and they're all baggy shirts. She's got two makeup items in her drawer, a lipstick and a hot pink eyeshadow that she cannot use. And she is stressing about what to wear. <sighs> I can't make myself pretty overnight. What do I do? And just like that, Richard Cinderella! Ah! Gia gets a text <laughs> message from Hannah. Yeah, I know you were expecting Richard. It's Hannah. Huh? Miss King, you said that you had plans on Sunday. So how about we hang out tomorrow, Saturday? Gia and Hannah make plans to hang out in the city in front of the authentic store. There's a pair of earrings in the storefront and Gia realizes that they're the same ones that Stacy gifted her. But when she pulls out the pair to compare it, it's very obvious that Stacy gifted her a massive knockoff. Like they only vaguely resemble the real ones. Gia's sad, you know, cause she realizes this indeed is happening again. And she's holding it, just feeling sadness for herself when Hannah runs up. My long awaited date with you. Gia gets scared and drops her knockoff earrings. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Hannah leans down to pick them up and hands them back, but her face looks a little concerned this time. Oh, uh, it's okay. They were just a gift. They're knockoffs. Yeah, Stacy gave them to me yesterday as a gift. I just realized right now that they're knockoffs. Hannah flips her hair behind her ears and shows off her ears where she's wearing. Those are the real ones, right? Yeah, you can tell they shine differently, right? They're beautiful. Yeah, you can tell the difference. So I don't know if I'm delivering it well, but Hannah's not doing it in like a braggy way. She seems like that ditzy friend who just like loves to be nice to people. So is she very wealthy or something? I don't know. We're going to find out. We're uh. going to find out. It's all connected. Yeah. So they go to a restaurant to eat spicy rice cakes and they're just chowing down on soju. And Hannah's like, so why did you quit drinking? It's so nice drinking with you. What do you mean? I drink a lot. You said that you didn't drink. You said that you quit drinking because of some sort of drunken mistake. Me? A drunken mistake? Gia gets a flashback of herself getting so drunk. It seems like she cheated on her boyfriend in college. At least that's what implied. But we don't know for sure. Ah, uh, oh yeah, okay, yeah. So I stopped drinking for a little bit, but recently I was just so frustrated with Michael that I started, her. So you're saying because of your boyfriend, you're drinking again? Uh, not just because of my boyfriend, I guess. I realized that drinking in moderation is fine. You know, being scared of another mistake, it seems like a dumb idea to quit drinking. Do, do you want some fried dumplings? Yes, ma'am, can we get six more fried dumplings over here? So the girls order six more dumplings and Hannah goes to fucking town. Like this girl can actually eat and like slay and serve and eat and do it all over again. I really like you, Hannah. You're bright and you're healthy. Is that where your name comes from? That's right. My name means joyous connection. Be a joyous connection to anyone. That's my motto. Okay, well, let's make a toast to a joyous connection. And they start going to town on the food. You know, I'm so glad that we met today instead of Sunday because on Sundays we can't drink so much because we've got work the next day. And ooh, isn't your reunion tomorrow? Oh yeah, that. I, I haven't decided if I wanted to go yet. To be honest, I wasn't really, I wasn't just unpopular. I was bullied. What? You were bullied? Why? I don't know. One day everyone just hated me. So that made me feel small and I ended up making mistakes and everyone would hate me even more. Well, you should ask them. You should ask them why. How could I? 
Well, how will you know if you don't ask? Honestly, I'm the type to run away when things get too hard, but you should try all that you can before that. Like, I need to know if these people are simply crazy or if they had good reasons. I have to ask so that I don't have regrets later. No regrets. Yeah, no regrets. Julia's like, why the fork didn't I think about that? But she responds, yeah, turning a shameful past into history, it sounds easy, but it can't be done overnight for someone like me. That may be true, but you can try. I can. A stitch in time saves nine. Those who are prepared will not fail. Uh, She's pointing at the sky. Like a little. Uh, 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 she takes another shot of soju, grabs a napkin, and starts wrapping up the dumplings. What are you doing? Oh, I love dumplings. I want to eat them when I get home later. It's finally time for me to repay your kindness, though. Come on, let's go. So she slips the dumplings in her bag, and they head out to the hair salon, a fancy one where they're greeted by two hairstylists and maybe, I don't know, the boss of the place. Hello, everyone. This is my favorite superior at work. I want to gift her a makeover. Gia sits down on the chair, and Hannah tells her, I'm going to pay with my membership here. No, 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 Hannah. I, I can pay. Shh. The designer walks up and starts touching Gia's hair. Your hair is very thick. Uh, any style would look great. Should we do an S curl perm? How about a wavy perm? Hannah responds, hmm, if we change your style too drastically, you're going to feel like a completely different person. So maybe like a soft wavy perm. Oh, and like an eyelash lift. That'd be nice. Wait, I do want to feel like a completely different person. Okay. Yeah, then let's do it. And we get a movie makeover montage scene. Gia gets the infamous hair chop into a shoulder length bob. And Hannah tells her, those who are not as mentally mature like you judge others by their looks. If you want something, you dress accordingly. That's the start. So after the hair transformation, they get a makeup artist and a stylist to let her try on clothes. It's a full on makeover. And like, we have to assume that Hannah is really rich because some of the dresses that she's trying on are like Versace. Okay, so it's a rich bestie here. Yeah. But she doesn't act like one. No. I see. Gia's already crazy pretty, right? But she looks insane now. She puts on contacts. And this is the first time that she sees herself and she's got tears in her eyes. And Hannah is a real friend. She doesn't look jealous. Not even a hint of jealousy. She's making this happen for Gia and she's very happy for her. So they go back to Gia's apartment and Hannah falls asleep on the floor on like a little bed mattress and Gia's asleep on her bed and she's having nightmares about Michael and Stacy cheating on her and then killing her. So she jolts awake and Hannah's in her sleep still mumbling about dumplings. <laughs> and then Gia gets a text from manager Kim. Mrs. Kang, about the meal kit. I approved your proposal, but I'm putting Mrs. Yang and Stacy on the team. They'll make up for what you lack. Gia's like, this bitch is for real right now? Stacy did something because why is Stacy all of a sudden on the team and why is this proposal even being accepted by Mr. Kim? Stacy texts Gia, you didn't forget about tomorrow, right? Heart, 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 heart. Close heart down, 5.30 p.m. Heart, 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 heart. Gia texts Stacy back, okay? <laughs> this took me out, okay? She's back, fed up? Yeah, Stacy is doing the most and Gia's like, mm. And seeing this cold ass response, Stacy instantly calls Gia and Gia picks up and Hannah is like asleep two feet away. Hey, Hey, Gia, what you doing? What you been up to today? Oh, I went out to eat with Hannah. She's sleeping right now. Hannah's at your house right now? Why? We were talking and she fell asleep and we had some drinks too. Hello? You should have invited me too. Did I do something to upset you? No. Did you do something to upset me? No, nothing. But I did call to ask you for a favor. What is it? I was wondering, it's about your proposal. Uh, it's really good. It's really great, actually. Can I fix it up a little and propose it again? No, Stacy, you can't. It's my proposal. Why not? Yours was rejected, and I really need this to become a full-time employee. If I get this, then we can build our careers together. Sorry, but I'll give you my next good idea. Also, stop calling me by my name at work. We're friends, but technically I'm your senior at work. You're crossing the boundaries, making me run coffee errands and ordering me around. Let's not mix business with our personal lives, got it? Dang. <laughs> what? I gotta go. I'll see you tomorrow. Gia hangs up and Stacy is seething. What the fuck was that? What was that? Gia, how dare you do that to me? I swear, just when I put my guard down, she forgets what a loser she is. <laughs> I'm gonna have to teach her her place tomorrow. Then Stacy picks up the phone and texts Gia. Heart, heart, I love you so much. Heart, heart, TTYL girly. Heart, heart, PS, don't forget to wear the earrings I bought you. Heart, heart. 
Right after texting this, Stacy goes to a restaurant to meet with manager Kim and she's got her hair in two braids. She's wearing pink. She looks all cute. And it's very obvious what Miss Girl is trying to do here. And manager Kim can barely keep it in his pants. Stacy, over here. What did your mom say on the phone? She said I'd be okay with you. She said it's fine if I break my curfew. It's so silly. I'm 33, but I still have a curfew. It's because you're so pretty. She's just worried, and she's right to. Let me explain to you something about women. Women should grow up sheltered. Oh, dude, this show is a lot. You're right, but so what if my mom raises me like this? I still need to meet a reliable oppa that's going to keep sheltering me and keep me safe from the world. She looks up at him seductively. Mr. Kim's choking on his food because she's got him in a chokehold. Absolutely. We're not at work, so that means I can call you by your first name, right? Manager Kim is like seeing stars. He's having his main character moment and he's getting a flashback back into that delivery room where Stacy's birthing his offspring. Oh, God. Of course, from now on, we're more than just coworkers. Kim takes out Gia's meal kit proposal and he uses a little Sharpie to X out her name. And it's funny because he can't even like scratch it out. You can still clearly see her whole name, but he just puts a little symbolic X over it, gives it back to Stacy, and Stacy seems very happy. But we're back at the high school reunion where Gia walks in with her makeover and Stacy is shook. I mean, everybody's shook. Everyone's gaping at Gia because remember, only Hannah was there when Gia got a makeover. Stacy didn't even know Gia cut her hair, let alone that she's looking like an A list actress right now. Also, remember, Gia wasn't supposed to know that this is a high school reunion. In her past life, she thought it was a casual dinner between them two. Oh, Stacy, is this not just dinner for us? I didn't realize it was going to be a whole party. Stacy doesn't say anything, but all the guys are tripping over themselves. Hey, come, come, come sit next to us. They're whispering, that's Gia. What happened? And this random loser guy is like, wow, Gia, you used to be a loser. How did you get so pretty? <laughs> I don't even remember you. So we're basically strangers. So you could stop being so rude. Oh, was I being rude? I thought I was being friendly. Sorry, I'm, I'm just so clueless. Another guy leans over. Yeah, that guy's clueless, been clueless in high school. Clueless now. You should talk to me instead. But the mean girls are even more upset. They scoff. You have the audacity to come in here and talk about manners? Hey, are you wearing the same earrings as Stacy? Are you still copying her? Gia pushes her hair back behind her ears. These earrings? The guys next to her stare at her earrings, then at Stacy's. And one of the guys says, Oh, no, they're not the same. Gia's look really nice. Stacy, yours look fake. Stacy's does look like knockoffs. Gia's look very much real. Because Hannah lent them to her. Ah! Hey, Stacy, are those knockoffs? Did you copy Gia? You could have at least bought some better knockoffs. <laughs> Guys, cut her some slack. Maybe she's broke. Who said that? Another guy. Okay. Like, just a random, okay. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stacy looks pissed, and Gia's thinking to herself, I'm sure you had another pair of fake ones that you're wearing right now to show that I copied you and that your fake ones looked real compared to how bad mine were, the ones that you gifted me. But what do we do? I think I found a real friend. Gia excuses herself to go to the restroom and everybody is still flabbergasted by her new look. She's like, I need to use the restroom, excuse me. And as soon as she leaves, Stacy rips out her earrings like a little five-year-old. Meanwhile, Gia goes to the exact restroom stall that she was found in previously in her past life when the other girls were talking shit about her. She goes to hide in there and it looks like she's trying to test if history is going to repeat itself, if the whole thing is going to be different. And what do you know? The mean girls come in to wash their hands. I can't believe Gia actually showed up. Why would she do that? It's not like she has any friends. Did you see her? All that stuff looks brand new. She must be here to brag. Stop talking like you're from Seoul, Gretchen. It sounds weird. Sorry. Anyway, why does Stacy still hang out with Gia? Obviously, Stacy's too nice for her, even though Gia just leeches off of her and steals everything. Ugh, I hate Gia. Like in high school, what she did to Stacy, we really have to take care of Stacy, or otherwise she's going to do it again. Wait, Regina, Gia wasn't at her table, at her seat at the table. I think she said that she was going to the restroom. They go one by one, kicking in the stalls like the bullies they are, but this time when they get to the stall that Gia's in, she kicks it out first, scaring the shit out of them. <laughs> and she walks out and Regina, the main bully says, were you in there this whole time? Were you just pretending like you weren't, you sly little bitch? Then what did you suppose I do? I was here first. Was I supposed to stop peeing and come out to greet you? Don't mind me. Keep talking. And I'm curious too. What is it that I did to Stacy in high school? 
You ask like you don't know. You literally copied her all the time. You wanted everything that she had. Like today, aren't you copying Stacy's earrings? <laughs> These? Stacy gifted me a pair, but they were fake. It was very obvious. So I bought the authentic ones because then we'd still be matching and I wouldn't hurt her feelings, right? Gia reaches into the bag to pull out the letter from Stacy and pulls out the super fake earrings. What else am I coveting that's rightfully Stacy's? Her man. What, there's a guy at work. Michael, Stacy told us that she's into him and now you want to steal him. Look, people don't change. It's just like high school. When Stacy was into Elby and you made them break up. I made Stacy break up with Elby because they were dating and Stacy is now dating Michael from UNK. Yeah, you told Stacy to break up with Elby and now she recommended you for a job at UNK and you're trying to steal her man. You're really crossing the line here, Gia. <sighs> I can't even deal with you guys. Hey, if you're going to, do all of this after only hearing one side of the story? At least try to fact check. Listen carefully. She pulls out her business card. UNK Food Marketing Assistant Manager Gia Kang. I'm an assistant manager at UNK. I, I heard the contract workers get business cards too nowadays. How can we even trust you? I joined the company seven years ago. When did Stacy join? Wait, let me answer that. I got promoted three years ago and I remember putting in a recommendation for Stacy about same time last year. Wait, that's right. Stacy started talking about it last year. But the weirdest thing is, now that you mention Michael, he's my boyfriend. Gia rolls her eyes, pulls out her phone, and calls Michael. She puts him on speakerphone. He's camping with the boys because of course he is. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. I'm at my school reunion. Did you call? What? Oh, no, no. I, I wanted you to have fun, so I didn't call. I must have butt dialed. Oh, I see. That's great. Say hi to my friends, Michael. Friends? Uh, hi. We're Gia's friends. Are you really her boyfriend? Oh yeah, I'm Gia's boyfriend, Michael. I didn't know Gia had any friends other than Stacy, but take care of Gia for me, guys. Hello? Uh, uh, b Gia had hung up on him. Is that good enough for you guys? Gia pushes past them and walks out. She gets back to the table, grabs her stuff to leave, but Stacy's trying to act normal and stop her. Gia, wait, where are you going? At the same time, the mean girls leave the bathroom and they come out to the main dining party room area and they're all just standing there in front of their entire high school class, Gia, Stacy, and the mean girls. The mean girls aren't done. Yeah, Gia. Fine, you think you did something in there? But back in high school, why did you tell Stacy to dump her boyfriend? Gia looks at Stacy and Stacy's avoiding eye contact. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. That is weird. I did have feelings for Elby, but Stacy never dated him. Gia looks straight at Stacy. Did you date Elby? The mean girls turn around. <laughs> See, the thing is that... I'm so sorry, Gia. I couldn't tell you back then that Elby and I were dating because I knew you liked him. What? You said I told you to dump him. So did I know about your relationship or not? Uh, um... It was a secret relationship, so I didn't tell you. Did I know about it or not? Which all of this is making sense. But the mean girls are still on Stacy's side. Gia, stop it. You're scaring Stacy. This is why you have no friends because of your temper. Why are you nitpicking something that's in the past? And Gia's flabbergasted. You're nitpicking. So am I. I didn't ask questions back then. Did you forget how you tormented me for three years? Even now, I showed you my business card and explained everything. And you want to bring up my temper? Why should we believe you, Gia? What if your business card is fake? Fake? Like the bag that you brought tonight? What the hell? I bought this bag in 12 monthly installments with my very first paycheck. Oh, <laughs> okay, then. <sighs> Funny little brat, aren't you? You call it fake based off of an assumption, and now what? You just say, okay, then? Then do what you want. Then do what you want. Then what do you want me to do? You need to apologize, Gia. Say you're sorry. You should apologize to me. You guys bullied me for three years. Why? Because of one thing Stacy said? You bullied me. Why? Because you got a kick out of it. But you probably don't want to apologize though. Because you just wanted to bully me. You didn't want a reason. You just wanted a random reason. You don't care about the truth. <laughs> what are you talking about? Of course we care about the truth. Okay? We're honest people. So you're saying that Stacy and Elby never dated, right? But the actual parties involved stated they did. So who are you to say? So it seems like the Stacy and Elby thing is like a really big deal because it's implied that the main reason that the mean girls bullied Gia was because they were under the impression that Gia ruined Stacy's relationship with Elby because Gia was jealous and wanted Elby for herself. And that's why they bullied Gia for being like a homewrecker, shitty best friend. So I don't know. OK, now, obviously, Richard somehow found out about all of this. And that's why he tracked down the very elusive, very 
nowhere there, LB, and he pops up at the reunion right at this very moment to set the record straight. I'm not sure what's going on here. And everyone turns around, shocked. <gasps> Does that LB? And he's like, he's never been around. They might have heard about him in some papers, but also he's hot. <laughs> and LB's like, I don't know anything else, but I can tell you one thing. Stacy and I never dated. And he turns ah! to Gia, his very first love. Gia, it's been a while. Dang! Was it like kind of hot? Yeah. Ah! Yeah. And then Wait, everyone, so do we have like a triangle going yeah, on now? Yeah, and everyone's asking where he's been, why he's never called, and is it true that he never dated Stacy? And like, where is he working? Is he really the chef? But he's ignoring everybody, and he's just all eyes on Gia, like she's the only one in the room. <laughs> By the way, did you really like me? Then why did you do that back then? She has no idea what he's talking about, but she's also freaking the fork out. So she runs out of the restaurant and starts speed walking out. She wants nothing to do with it. She feels like she's cle cleared her name and this is like getting too much. And obviously Richard Daddy is parked outside in his G Rolex Bentley SUV premium. Bro, I don't know what car it is. I think it's a Range Rover. I think it's a Land Rover. Korea covers their emblems. Um. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know what car that is, okay? Richard's going through a lot. He's got a lot on his mind because his grandpa was trying to push him into an arranged marriage with a beautiful daughter from another wealthy CEO family. But Richard only has eyes for his nerdy little princess, okay? He literally told his scary grandpa that he did everything he wanted. I went to the US to study. I went to the right schools. I joined the marketing team. I did everything that I was told to do and I did it. But now this is what I need to do. I'm in a one-sided relationship. And the grandpa is like, what the fuck? Okay, she doesn't even like you back. And the grandpa's like, when have you ever, this is the current CEO, when have you ever done anything that you didn't want to do? You listened to me because you didn't have your own dreams. It was always like that. Then grandpa, that you should know that I'll do what I want this time too. Oh, this little. He gets up from the table and he walks over to his grandpa. So his grandpa was so mad that he knocked over his tea and Richard starts wiping the tea off his grandpa's hands with a handkerchief. So it seems like there is a level of love and respect between them. So it's not like your stereotypical like, no, I'm going to cut you off. You are no longer the heir. It seems like it's, you know, a little bit more normal. I just wanted to tell you, grandfather, there's someone that I really like and I don't want to have any other issues with all these other women. His grandpa leaves, but it's not over. He tells his assistant to figure out who that girl is. He wants to nip it in the butt before it becomes a problem. Who? Whoever the girl that he's into. He wants, uh. yeah. The assistant reassures the grandpa that he's never made a mistake. You know, that Richard is a guy with his head on straight. But grandpa's not having it. He's like, figure it out. Find me the girl. Bring her to me. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Anyway, as Richard is thinking about all of this, he's also stalking Gia in his car, waiting outside the restaurant for her to make sure, I don't know, she gets home safe. She's walking out, no glasses, new hairstyle, white flowy dress. Why is she so pretty for a reunion? Huh. He gets out of the car and he's about to approach her, but he sees another guy chasing after her. What the fork? LB is running right behind Gia, chasing our girly down, and she's not standing a chance because she's wearing heels. They run to a nearby park where LB stops Gia, and Richard is hiding behind the shadows, literally behind a statue, watching this whole thing, making sure Gia doesn't get hurt, because the world is a scary place for a girl without her optical frames, okay? Wait, stop. LB grabs Gia's hand, and then he gets awkward, so he lets it go. Sorry about that. Let me wipe your hand, and he grabs it again to wipe it, and it's like, oh God, sorry. What am I doing right now? LB, I think I have to go. Wait, I, I never liked you, LB. That was just a slip of the tongue. I had a crush on you. LB screams it so loud, everyone around them at the park starts clapping like it's some sort of public proposal. They're like, oh, that's so cute. We're like witnessing a love story. And that's the end of the episode. Like the way it's so fucking unserious and the way that this is the cliffhanger to the episode, I'm dead, all right? For this episode? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, but oh. also the episode like this episode, but also the episode. Oh, they were just and then they like freeze frame dramatic music because, you know, K drama. And I'm like, this is so unserious. I love it. I fucking love this show. I don't know what okay, else to so say. Yes. Question, though. The CEO, bad boy, bad, yeah. baddie, Richard boy. Like. Why is he obsessed with her? Oh, we're we gonna, yeah, we're going to find out. Oh, oh, oh. I know, but you don't know. 
Do, do they know that she come from she came from the future? Who's they? CEO bad boy rich boy. Uh, I know, but you don't know. Okay. Guess when you are gonna know? Next Monday. Wow. <laughs> I love this show, guys. It's so cute. So stay tuned for next Monday if you're interested in a trope daddy and a trope mommy having a baby. This is that show, and we're gonna eat it up on Monday. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs>